It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Aaron Griffith from Fortune.com is here, along with Owen J.J. Stone and Larry Maggot. we got a lot to talk about. Ahmed's Clock Bomb, the new Watch OS 2.0, iOS 9, the new iPhones, why they may or may not be better than Android, and a whole lot more. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit This Week in Tech, episode 528, recorded Sunday, September 20th, 2015. The Artisanal Mic Stand. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10 day trial, visit lynda.com slash twit2. That's L Y N D A.com slash T W I T and the number two. And by audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter, user ID audible underscore com. And by stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with stamps.com. Use stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to stamps.com now, click the microphone, and enter twit. And by Citrix Go to Meeting the powerfully simple way to meet with coworkers and clients from the convenience of your computer, smartphone, or tablet. Share the same screen and see each other face-to-face -face with HD video conferencing. For a 30-day free trial, visit gotomeeting.com today. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Time we to, uh, for us to dissect the tech news of the week, and we always bring together... I, you know, one of the things that's different about Twit and every other show on the network is... Every week is a different panel, and, we, and it's always fun because even if people have been here before, the mix is always kind of magical, and it can change the style and the feeling of the show. We welcome back Larry Magid. He is on-air tech analyst for CBS News. He's been here many times, CEO of ConnectSafely.org. Larry, good to see you again. Good to see you, Leo. From uh, the South Bay. Oh, uh, yeah, Palo Alto. Palo Alto area. From uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, we don't know where because he only has a mail drop and won't tell us his address. Owen J.J. Stone. Oh, doctor. Here we have a thinner, lighter black pencil <laughs> made from the Swiss bones of dinosaurs. It's elegant in every way. Oh, yeah. Twi hey, Twit is in the can. If I'm you, here. If, you were the, I'm ready. if you were the African-American Johnny Ive, would you be in a black room, not a white room? Oh, it'd definitely be in a black room. That'd I'm hoping awesome. that you only see, like, the size of my face. Like, that would be the only thing you see. <laughs> a floating in my head. face. Yeah. I have the black turtleneck on, and a black skinny <laughs> suit with black shoes. And then there'd be just this big screen behind me with pencils, thinner and thinner, lighter, lighter and newer. Magical pencils. And expensive. Yeah. expensive. A floating head. $100 pencils. Now, everybody calm down. Be nice because we have a newbie in our midst. Aaron Griffith <laughs> is with us from Fortune.com. It's great to see Hi. you, Aaron, from the Southland, from me. L.A. area. I no, I'm in I'm in New York. Oh, what am I saying? New York. I was just thinking I was in L.A. and I met Aaron. No, no, I met you in uh, Manhattan. Or in, that's right. Yeah, at the I at the podcast upfront, which were interesting. You wrote a very nice article. Thank you in uh, Fortune magazine <laughs> uh, or Fortune.com about us. Uh, it was the first time. It was last week. The first time uh, podcasts ever had an upfront. Uh, and it was interesting because oh. we were talking to big agencies, uh, big advertisers about why podcast advertising uh, makes sense. And, boy, I think there couldn't be a better time to do that because on Wednesday, ad blocklips now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the, and it's really interesting because people weren't sure what to think about ad blocking coming to iOS. iOS 9 came out on Wednesday. And, uh, and then Im almost immediately... The top-ranked apps on the Apple Store were ad-blocking programs, four of them. So it, it was immediately apparent that not only were people sophisticated enough to turn this on, to download these and use them, but they were using them in great numbers. And now 
everybody's really nervous. None more mm -hmm. so than the creator of one of those blockers. It was number one on the Apple Store. It's called Peace, written by Marco Arment. Uh, anybody who's in the Mac sphere knows Marco. Uh, he created Instapaper, uh, then later created uh, Overcast, which is the number one uh, podcasting app on iOS. He's kind of a, uh, you know, a... a, a Eminence Grease, and I don't want to use that phrase, but he's, he's a man a, about the internet. He, yeah, and especially among the Mac world, right? People respect Marco. Mm -hmm. He does some podcasts. He's, and uh, so he put out an ad blocker. Hmm, kind of interesting. The ad blocker used a database from Ghostery, which is a well known desktop plugin that blocks all kinds of trackers and advertising. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Ghostery in its default database blocks an ad serving service called The Deck. An ad service that Marco uses on his website, marco.org, and his close friend and Apple pundit, John Gruber, uses on Daring Fireball. Gruber was not, not thrilled, <laughs> let's put it that way, that ads on Daring Fireball were being blocked, especially since probably a vast majority of his visitors uh, are Apple users. M many of them probably use mobile Safari. Um, and within three days, Marco pulled the plug on Peace, saying it just doesn't feel good. Yeah, my pockets feel lighter, <laughs> and my friends are upset with me. I was excited at first. I was like, oh, look, an equal opportunity blocker. He's like, look, I'm even blocking myself because I believe blocking is just. That's exactly blocking right. Is true. He said, but I didn't think then, it'd be fair to turn off the deck blocking. But then he turned around and pulled the plug on it. And let me tell you something. First of all, if you don't want people to block stuff, stop with these crappy ads on my phone. When I can't get to the article I want to read because you got pop-ups with these little dinky little X's yeah. and I can't get out of them, it defeats the purpose. I don't go back to try and read your stupid article. So maybe if you had better ads, people wouldn't want to block them. It's simple. Right on. Marco's written. Fact, that's what the internet is all about. The internet is about giving us better ads. It's not like watching television where they put on these crap ads that are taking a, a guess as to who, you're, who their audience is. The internet knows their audience. That's the whole idea of tracking, which I, believe it or not, I'm not entirely opposed to if it's done properly, but give us ads that are relevant and, and you know, not obnoxious, not annoying, not driving us away from content. I agree with you. I've, I've, I've stopped going to sites because of crappy ads. I'm, I'm of both opinions. Uh, on the one hand, I really understand that sites, especially small sites like uh, Daring Fireball, really that's how they monetize. There's no other way sure. to make money. And if you go to Daring Fireball, the ads are not obtrusive. They're not obnoxious. They're, uh, right. I'll have to turn off my ad blocker to show you the, <laughs> the ads. <laughs> well, whoops. The ads are Daring Fireball. The guy who makes his living selling well, Okay, okay. I'm going to talk in a second. In a second. Looks, Wait a minute. It looks different <laughs> mobile than it does you going on your desktop also. Yeah. The, the, the mobile, mobile is much worse. Is much the, worse. It's a real issue. Like blocking ads is blocking ads. But I mean, on mobile, like there's nothing you could do and you're trapped behind this wall of craptitude and it's horrible and it's frustrating. So block everything until they come with better ads. And your ads are built in so unless i really want to fast forward you uncle leo i can't do it i'll just suffer through it and enjoy the ad as it comes well, so do better ads do better marketing and then people will be happy about it you know you know the one ad that gets me really angry is is when when they start playing audio when you don't ask for it when, when you're you're reading an article or doing something all of a sudden two minutes in audio starts playing and and i i don't know it's I think the worst should be auto play audio, should be banned i agree yeah, in every respect. absolutely especially audio aaron go ahead Video maybe i mean part of the problem Part of the reason that ads on the internet are so terrible is because uh, they don't make any money. And so publishers are scared and they just let advertisers do whatever they want. Um, advertisers say, okay, now we want to do an overlay. Okay, now we want to do an autoplay ad. How can we shove these ads in people's faces more aggressively? Because they aren't, uh, you know, as profitable and they aren't as uh, as effective as any of the analog versions of these ads. So I don't know. Internet advertising has always been crappy, even on the desktop, um, and it's even worse on mobile. I don't know. I, th I think that this is going to be. Um, a day, a moment of reckoning for uh, publishers and advertisers. The thing that sucks the most about it, though, is that the publishers are the ones that are getting hurt, and really, it's the advertisers' fault for forcing them to have horrible ad formats. Here's uh, this is John Gruber's uh, Daring Fireball site. Here's the ad on the left-hand side. Email different. It is as yeah, unobtrusive okay. and mild an ad. But here's the problem with ad blockers: they're a broad brush. Uh, ad blockers 
block every ad, including the. But is that an effective ad right there, though? Are you actually looking at that and 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 you know registering the, that well, company and thinking about it? I mean, a, I, are you clicking on it? You know, that's a great point. One of the reasons these ads are so obnoxious is because we don't see them. <laughs> right? I know. Well, I tuned. I have literally trained my brain to ignore banner ads, and uh, right. and in fact, I catch myself when there's a pre-roll on a YouTube video. Um, looking away until the pre-roll's over. I don't want to yeah. see the ad until I can skip I mean, click, it. Click through, click through rates are an average of 0.01%. Like internet advertising has never been effective. This is that we're just sort of showing, ad blockers are just making that a lot more apparent. Well, as I said, I feel uh, I have a, a foot in both camps because as a user, I of course, I don't want my websites to load in three times the amount of time with hundreds of megabytes of extra stuff, not to mention the security issues raised by these ads because sometimes it's malware that's loading uh, because these ad networks don't have any effective way of policing the ads. Um, so I completely understand why a user would say, well, I'm just not going to put up with that. On the other hand, if I'm Marco Arment or I'm John Gruber or I'm Leo Laporte and I'm relying on ad revenue to provide free media... I'm kind of screwed, right? Or are, is is here's I guess the question: Is the ad industry going to figure out a way around this before some of these sites start to close and just run some, out of money? Right. Somebody's going to come up with something. I don't think the ad industry. I don't think the ad industry gives a crap about these small sites at all. I agree with you. They don't <laughs> care, or they wouldn't. <laughs> They're do way this. too small for big advertisers to even care. If we're talking yeah. about you know like big billion dollar spenders. Well, so what's the solution? I mean, I, you know, Google, by the way, is one of these big ad networks. Uh, so is uh, Yahoo. So is Microsoft. A lot of big ad networks out there. Um, the cheesy ads often don't come from the big ones. Um, Renee Ritchie of iMore, who's talked about this a little bit, because iMore has a lot of ads. In fact, their sister site, their Android site, what is it, Android Central, is unusable on mobile. You can't get through it. But they also, they buy into it because they do slideshows, you know. They, they, they want to maximize revenue, so they don't put an article on one page. They put it on 20 pages. Right. They're, uh, they're just as complicit in some respects, aren't they? It, again, I, I understand if people need to make money. And go ahead and make that money. Just shut up when somebody figures out a way to block your ads. Keep putting these crappy ads up. People are going to want to find ways to block them, and that's going to be the game. So if you want people to look at your ads, then find, like, and it's hard to say to do something viral or something catchy. But for peace sake, if you're creative, other people will share your freaking ads. Yeah. I saw so many people pass around that Quiznos Burning Man thing. I got sick and tired of watching it. Like it was on TV, like fan. Booms. I'd love to see more of that every stuff. five seconds. In fact, you, we guys, thought you guys think you guys think BuzzFeed is the answer? Then basically, <laughs> like are journalists creating content for brands no, and making it look me. like look like it's content. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, let me let me tell you. Um, BuzzFeed says they don't even care if you use an ad blocker. They just want to get everywhere, right, Aaron? I mean, that's, well, that's the whole. A, that's the thing. They don't. They're ad blocker proof because they don't have banner ads. All of their ads are native content. It's stuff created by their branded content team Eesh. that looks just like any other BuzzFeed listicle, but it might say sponsored by Quiznos or Taco Bell or whoever. And let's not just blame BuzzFeed. The New York Times does it. Uh, everybody, Forbes is mm -hmm. horrific. Again, yep. that that's a that's more. I, I'll accept that. That's a more creative way to have your advertiser pass around. I see more. It's commonplace now. It's exactly, it is, Aaron. It is the reason is, they like it is because much. users don't know the difference. And Again. when they find, there's a study, there's a study that Contently just did that showed that um, users don't know the difference. And then when they do know the difference, they're angry. They 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 don't like it at all. So it's really screwing the reader even more so than ugly banner ads Leo, that we have to click. You around. get email. I get email every day from somebody who offers to offers me a free yes. post. You know, they offered to write a post yes. for me. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, you know, love I love your just, site. You know, while, I could pay you some <laughs> money. To... Oh my god! Even that isn't just me. Everybody, just, just my site. They we love? get that. We get those too. Yep. Yeah. yeah, constantly. And in fact, that is a big and growing business. And so that's one thing I caution people who run ad blockers. You may not. There may be unintended consequences. You may not like some of your favorite sites may disappear. Those that don't may have may have crypto ads, ads that are still there that can't be blocked that look like content, and you now have the, the onus on you to figure out, is that real journalism? Is that trustworthy, or is it just an ad? And I don't think, especially in the tech industry, where we're going to be hit the hardest, I think, tech journalists, uh, I don't think that's a good thing. Now, one thing I do notice, now that ad blockalypse is here, some companies have figured out ways to get around it. Here I am on The Verge, 
And I've got an ad blocker running, but uh, I don't think that's an article about Intel's two-in-ones. I think that's an ad, isn't it? And yeah, it even says ad, but it wasn't blocked. And we're hearing this more and more that sites have figured out ways around this. Now, one way is to serve this as a first party, right? If this content comes from the verge.com, a blocker won't block it. And I suspect that's how they're doing it. But they're, but they're finding ways to get ads to you anyway. And the page I mean, loads correctly. It works right. Like, I'm well, sure if I load that on mobile, it would work oh, as look, opposed to those pop-up There's a Virgin that American ad that's getting right by the ad blocker. They're, the but Verge immediately figured this out, right? Most advertisers don't want to sell or to buy ads directly from right. the Verge like that because they'll have to pay a lot more for a handshake deal and it's human or human intensive versus buying it on a exchange where they can win this audience at an auction and right. pay a lot less because algorithms are determining, you know, what exactly it's worth. They, advertisers don't want to do these kinds of ads and well, the Verge is able to do it because they have scale, but most right. little guys can't. And that's the problem yeah. also is that the, the big guys are able to get around this, not the little guys. Um, the other thing advertisers want is they want trustable tracking. I mean, one of the reasons they track is not because they're spying on you, but just to know, did you see the ad? Have you seen right. this ad more than three times? Well, maybe we should show you a different ad. Uh, maybe we'd like to show you an nice. ad of something that you're more interested in than less interested in. Tracking is not, is not, it can be benign and do yeah, things that I you agree. actually want it to do. I agree. It, it actually allows, and that's what I was talking before. I mean, if you think about traditional media, old media, you're watching an evening news program and you're seeing ads for Geritol or whatever old people take uh, because they just made a guess as to who the demographic is. But if you're a 30-year-old watching the evening news, the odds of seeing an ad that are going to apply to you are virtually zilch. Online, they can actually give you ads that, that might actually interest you, or at least they've got a running chance of it. So that, We contacted Marco. We've been trying to get Marco on, uh, on the air. Uh, we haven't mm -hmm. been able to. I think poor Marco Arment, who... Um, Kick really pretty much was caught between a rock and a hard place. He he created a, the number one app on the iTunes store with peace <laughs> and pulled it in three days. He pissed yeah. off his friends with it up there. He pissed off his customers with it, taking it down. Uh, he says it's a war. He's winning a war he doesn't want to fight uh, by making a successful uh, ad blocker. But I have to, th you know, there are plenty of other choices, and I have to think people with iOS 9 are going to... Uh, Go to Crystal or some other choice and and uh, use it. But I understand. Just a, a, a fun data point. Um, this company called Apptopia that does uh, estimates on um, how much money you know apps are making. Uh, they emailed me on Friday and said that in 36 hours he they estimated that he had made about 136 thousand dollars off of the app. Wow. Although he offered to give oh. it back um, all, and I don't know how many people will take him up on that, but that's just. A little bit of an incentive as to those people down or people who are creating these ad blocker apps, how much uh, money they can actually make. Hey, advertisers, you want to make money? Make an ad blocker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, in a way, isn't that what ad block? Ad blocker. <laughs> That's what ad block did. Ad, was it ad blocker or ad block plus? And I don't want to confuse them because they're two very different companies. But I think it was ad block plus has a trusted ads program, which Google pays into, and it Google's not blocked. They pay. Yeah. Ad block plus not to be blocked. That's extortion. What? That doesn't sound right, does it? That's not what you thought you were getting when you got ad block. Um. Anyway, we knew this was going to happen. We've actually been talking about it for a while. What I didn't see, see coming is that Marco Arment would be the first casualty of the uh, ad block wars. So, uh, Marco, we'd love to have you hear from you, and and and. But I suspect he he feels like the best thing he could do is just lay low for as long. As long as he can, um, because uh, he's not going to. There's no way he can make everybody happy. Well, he did say in, in his letter that that he knows he's going to take flack, but that he also knows it'll go away. And in the long run, the best solution is to do what he did. So I think I think you're right. I think he wants to lay low for a while, but you know he might want to talk about it in a few months. I think it's kind of a, a I think courageous thing to do to say, you know, I I was wrong, and to do it so quickly. With Especially the, something that he obviously didn't whip this thing up overnight. I mean, he obviously put a lot of thought and planning and work into creating the product and then to so quickly realize he was wrong, which is something that very, very few companies ever do uh, when they release a product and, and for whatever reason, uh, get, get negative flack about it. It's very rare. That's the fun thing about apps though, you know, like they come and go with the night regardless. There's so many apps that come in and explode on the scene. There's so many that you'll never hear about that were awesome to a small group of people. So he's had a, he's had a lot of hits. So letting something go isn't that big of a deal to him. 
also yeah. for that. For well, that he was also an early programmer on, uh, I think, the first programmer on Tumblr, and I think he made a little money on that. So uh, I think he that's probably good. doesn't need the money. I'm, I don't want to speak for you, Marco, but that's my guess. Hey, let's take a break, and we'll talk about an even more controversial story. <laughs> Is it possible? Yes, Ahmed and the ticking clock. But first, a word from lynda.com, the online learning platform. See, people, I don't, I think people, the real key with ads is if people want to support you, if they're part of your community, they, they listen and they, and even if they don't listen, they buy the products. And that's, to me, I think that's a more, I was talking about this, as you know, Aaron, at the IAB, I said, we, we don't, we turn down advertisers all the time. We think of our community as our real precious resource and an advertiser, which supports the financial, gives us the financial resources to do what we do is making a deal with us to to reach out to our community and we make sure that it's a, as a peer so they come in they say here's what we do if you're interested here's what we offer almost all our advertisers have free trials we encourage that because that gives you know that's kind of like the most honest way to come to you to say well try it and see if you like it it won't cost you anything and if you do uh then you can buy it uh linda's but a great you also, there's also there's also a limit there though like you there's only so many things that you, the advertisers can ask you to do that you're willing to do. You yes, to, I say no all the time. Online. And because you have that autonomy, you're able to do that. A lot of media, big media companies yeah. don't do that. No, I like the sales being independent. teams are incentivized, right. you know, to right. to sell as much as possible, well, and then it all comes downhill, and the editorials last, and then just below editorial is the reader's consideration. Right. Well, I have to say, and that's one of the reasons. And uh, Larry, you you know this, but they're in some ways they're missed. The big uh, companies like Ziff Davis and IDG, the big computer magazine mm -hmm. publishers, the publisher always stood between the advertiser and the editorial. Yep. And yep. even at uh, Tech TV, which was owned by Ziff Davis, we were about to do a story on how to hack the Xbox 360. And uh, there was some concern that Microsoft, which is a big advertiser on Tech TV, would take yeah. a umbrage. It, to, it, to my everlasting gratitude, the salespeople there said, you know, our program director said, you're going to do this story. We're going to call Microsoft, let give them a heads up. Uh, but they're, but we're not going to kill the story yeah. just because it'll hurt an advertiser. Um, those days, I think, might be gone. I mean, that... Well, I have never... Okay, I have never been told by CBS that I couldn't do a story. No, uh, uh, these that. old line companies like ever, that don't ever. do that. Yeah. Now, now I, I wonder about there, CBS I Interactive. I wonder yeah. about CNET. I wonder if the well, same thing example, happens. In fact, we know, know it doesn't. Yeah, you know what happened a few years ago yes. with, at CES, and that was very embarrassing. Um, there are there are ads that run on the radio that embarrass me. That, that they're on. This, I mean, I see here's well, some horrible too. ads. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're, they're but they're completely separate from the editorial. Yeah, uh, CNET very famously picked uh, a product as best of CES yep. that. Uh, oh. Well, I forgot what it was. Was it Area? Network Hopper. It was the Hopper. 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 It was the Hopper that allowed ad skipping, fast, interestingly right. enough. Did we same, get same back topic. on the ads instead of doing the ad? I'm going to do the ad. Do? <laughs> I'm do the ad. But uh, CBS came to them and it, in a very shameful way, came to CNN and said, you know what? They are not going to win the best of CES. And they retracted it. And very, it was... A sh it was a black mark, but see, and I, I can't, I can't, I can tell you that CBS Radio News ran a story on the Hopper that year. And yeah, no, it, no, that's the thing, and then there's different me. divisions. Yeah, yeah. but uh, CBS Interactive or maybe CNET, I don't know, but somewhere in there, that line has been crossed. But in the old, in the good old days, and the and the really good uh, journalism uh, outlets like CBS, that just that wouldn't happen. You 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 yeah. don't mix editorial and, and advertising, and we we're very careful not to do that as well. Um, if something bad happens to one of our sponsors, we report it. Um, well, the difference is, I mean, you actually have just inserted editorial in the middle of an ad. I know which, I'm in the middle of an ad, and I have. <laughs> I don't even know who your sponsor is anymore. <laughs> I'll get back to Linda.com in a second. Yeah. Um, but that is one thing I have to say. Linda has not asked us for that, but the, probably the most common thing advertisers do ask us for that we won't do is native advert native content where they say well we'd like to sponsor a show we'd like to have you do a show about our content or our product mm -mm. but we that is something everybody wants because sure. that's the thing that gets around the ad blockers it doesn't even look like an ad it might say ad but it says mm -hmm. it subtly I'm right? enjoying your your beverage that that paid for the um well, i wouldn't you know what if coca-cola wants to put a label on my uh, water i'll do it i won't drink coca-cola
No, but they'll, they'll make you drink it out of, a, out of an opaque glass so people will think you're drinking yes, Coca-Cola. Yes, I'm sure those idle judges are not drinking Coca-Cola on American right. Idol. It just says Coca-Cola, right? No, in fact, we I'm trying to sell naming rights for the studio. That's I mean, I don't think that compromises us to do that, does it? It's your world. We're just living in it. You're an adult. Make that money. <laughs> Let's talk about Lynda.com. Let's get this money. Let's get this money. <laughs> Show me the money. Actually, I you see, here's a perfect example. And the reason Lynda.com advertises on Twitter is because people who watch our shows want to learn. They want to educate. They're trying to, uh, you know, build their skills. In the, and that's exactly what Lynda does. So it's a natural fit. If you are a problem solver, if you're curious, if you want to make things happen, Lynda.com has more than 3,500 courses online. By the way, nicely produced. These aren't YouTube videos. They're produced in their studios with some of the most passionate, best people in that field teaching you. And I love Linda for that. You all know they've got great technology uh, tutorials. Some of the best Photoshop. I mean, if you've got Burt Monroy teaching you Photoshop, there's nothing, you just don't get better than that. That's what you get at lynda.com. Photography, uh, if you want to learn Microsoft Office, if you want to uh, uh, learn how to uh, set up a Windows server, if you want to learn how to program. But they also have business stuff, which is cool. If you're starting a new business, they've got courses, and these are new courses, um, creating a business plan. Business fun. I should take a few of these. Business fundamentals, managerial accounting, creating customer value. Uh, if you're in sales, there is a course on fundamentals of lead generation. If you uh, are a CEO or some uh, uh, somebody who talks to the press, they've got a media training course. What a great idea! You know, going and getting media training is very expensive. You can go to lynda.com and get it, and speech writing, and analyzing your website to improve SEO. They've even got Guy Kawasaki on entrepreneurship. Again, wow. you don't get much better than that. Lynda.com. It really is a fantastic service. Because you pay once a month, you have the run of the place. You don't have to pick the course you want to take. If you're a completist, you can watch from beginning to end. I like to dip into courses a little bit at a time. You can do that, too. They've got transcripts you can search, so you can jump right to the part you want. You can even watch on the go with your iOS or Android device. I just love it. Lynda.com. Now, here's the deal. 10 days free. It's just, it's just like a full membership. You can go anywhere, watch anything. That's enough time to take a full course or take a bunch of parts of little courses. And, and it's free if you go to L-Y-N-D-A, Linda, L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash twit and the number two. Linda dot com slash twit two, 10 days free at Linda. We thank them so much for uh, their support of uh, this week in tech. This is turning out to be more controversial than I thought. Little 14-year-old Ahmed brings a clock. Actually, what he does, we found out, is he takes apart a clock, a clock that was very popular, like Radio Shack in the 80s, takes it apart, jiggers it around with it, brings it into school to show his engineering teacher. He's brand new. He's a freshman, brand new at this high school. And he kind of, you know, wants to establish himself. The engineering teacher looks at it, says, that's very nice. Put it away and do not show anybody your clock. Uh, unfortunately, the clock makes some noise in another class. The teacher says, what's that? He's got it in a, um, a case, a metal case. He opens it up. Teacher freaks out. Principal comes, grabs the kid, brings him back. They call the, uh, the police as, uh, assigned to that school because the school has, uh, you know, official police officers. The police come. They question him, which, by the way, is not a legal procedure without his parents present. Uh, handcuff him. And yeah. take him in. Uh, his parents are called before he has to serve any time in a jail cell or anything. He's taken home. Uh, very controversial and became a cause celebrity. Even the president said, hey, Ahmed, cool clock. Come to the White House. Right. Um, one of the reasons it's a hot button is because Irving, Texas, is not exactly a bastion of tolerance. The I think it was the mayor of Irving, Texas, uh, made a pretty you know, scandalous anti-Muslim anti speech. Um, so I think there's a little bit of sensitivity there. It was clearly not a bomb. The kid never said it was a bomb. The kid repeatedly said it was a clock. Um, and in fact, one of the police officers f perhaps foolishly said, well, it looks like a movie bomb to me. Because, of mm. course, in the movies, they always have a big clock on the bomb so that the hero can disarm the bomb with 007 seconds left. But in fact, if you were going to make a bomb, a couple of things. First, you probably wouldn't put a big clock on it. Second, you might put some explosives in it. There were, it was obvious, no explosives in the bomb. I loved the fact that uh, 
after this story came out, somebody reminded me that in the Walter Isaacson biography of Steve Jobs, uh, Wozniak tells a story of doing almost exactly the same thing in high school. He mm -hmm. took a metronome. He liked how it went click, click, click. It was an electronic metronome. He put it in a locker, and he wired it up so that if you opened the locker, it would speed up. Click, 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 click. And he, and he uh, stripped the labels off of a couple of batteries because he knew, he's a smart guy, it, a bomb requires explosives to look like explosives. He made something that really looked like a bomb, uh, got called in the principal's office and couldn't help but laugh when the principal said, is this a bomb? He said, no, it's not a bomb. He spent a night in juvie. Uh, of course, it was, so he taught the other inmates how to uh, strip the wires from the electrical uh, lighting and uh, 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 wire it to the bars on the windows so it would zap anybody who touched them. Waz went on to fame and fortune. I think Ahmed might too. He's been offered he might, yeah. a, a lot of things well, as a result. Ahmed's clock didn't work, so let's just start with that. <laughs> uh, let's, not, let's not put him in the Waz category. Just he, he's got a whole bunch of gadgets and toys, but the kid made a clock. Not only was it not a bomb, but the clock didn't clock. <laughs> Did just, it not work, let's really? Start with, no, apparently the clock didn't clock. I didn't so, read that part. Until time. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, the, clock, the clock wasn't fully functional. It wasn't working properly. On top of the fact that you Aaron, made the I don't think your mic's on. Yeah, you muted. Yeah, unmute Aaron. Okay. Unmute. <laughs> Aaron is using the best mic stand we've ever seen on this show, which is a cardboard box. But unfortunately, <laughs> no, we're not work. hearing. Suddenly, we didn't. She it's not our side. Is it? Her microphone. No. Mm. So. Let me let we'll me work, ask we'll you, oh that. doctor, we'll is this is this an example of uh, engineering while brown? Is this is there racism or anti-Muslim uh, feeling behind this? First of all, the fact the way that they treated this child was wrong. Once you even realize it wasn't a bomb, you still questioned him without his parents there or a lawyer there, and he repeatedly asked for somebody call my parents. They didn't. Secondly. Uh, somebody posts up, the, okay, so Wozniak actually made a bomb. He goes to juvie. That's the proper thing to do, whatever. But somebody else posted a thing where there were like seven other kids that did the exact same thing in other schools across the country. And some instance, somebody even thought it was a bomb. They weren't called the cops when they called their parents, whatever. It was quelled in like five minutes. Although, I, I don't know if you can use that as an example because we can also pull up examples of kids who pointed their finger like a gun and got suspended. Uh, Again, I mean, yeah. th this is it, this is crazy. unevenly enforced across the nation. It's sad right. because in the post 9-11 world, people are scared. Um, I have to think it has a little to do with the fact that the kid has uh, apparently an Arabic sounding name. Yes. Right. Yeah. And and where he lives. Yeah, Muhammad Ivy. Yeah. If, yeah. if he lived in New, uh, well, I guess New York's not a good place to call that, but because <laughs> New York is New York too. Uh, it's just, it's just sad. Whether it's racist or not, well, it's just sad. I, that I don't blame, yeah, I'm, I don't blame the teacher for being concerned. But once the police showed up and determined it wasn't a bomb, it seemed to me it should have been over. And yes. second of all, if they had to take him out of the classroom, why do you put handcuffs on a skinny little fourteen-year-old kid? I mean, that, that's just ridiculous to begin with. Well, once you know, you but, put but the teacher, I think, maybe had a cause to at least. You know, want to look into this to make sure it was okay, but then move on. But the cops, I think, way overreacted. If you need to put handcuffs on the kid, then that whole school needs to be evacuated. You don't stand really? around getting pictures taken in the office. Because if you really think that it's about to the point where this kid needs to be locked up, that school should be a ghost town ASAP. But they stood around talking, yipping and yapping, asking the same questions over and over again, knowing it wasn't a threat, but treating it like it was a threat. It was just poorly handled. So whether it was racist or not, you know, he gets free gadgets and toys out of it. He gets to go some cool places. He's not going back to school. You made a celebrity and you guys look like idiots in that school system. You know, it, it's just, it's sad. It's so annoying that I got to see this kid get all this stuff because he made a broken clock and that it's a big deal. <laughs> it shouldn't even yeah, be a big like, deal. Yeah. Right. Well, I think part of the president's point is to encourage kids to be makers and to tinker and to do things like that. Now, that's cool. Whether this kid is as exceptional as people are making him out to be and whether he deserves a job in Silicon Valley or a free ticket to MIT, I don't know. I mean, it seems to me he ought to be competing for those spots like the rest of the kids do. But, you know, we basically made a martyr out of him for a moment and yeah. then he became a celebrity. So. Good for him. I guess well, he's he, certainly getting more benefit oh. out of it than he's getting the, the momentary embarrassment and pain of being uh, arrested. He's been uh, invited to the White House. He will be going. He received a message of support from Hillary Clinton and offered to stop by Facebook to meet Mark Zuckerberg, an invitation to be an intern at Twitter, and I think even MIT got involved. 
Um, some have said, though, and the New York Post is a bastion of journalistic sensibility. Uh, Kyle Smith writing how Ahmed's clock became a false, convenient tale of racism. There's been a backlash. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a, a couple of points we'll, we'll kind of lay to rest here. People pointing out, in fact, we, we had the guy on uh, the new screensavers yesterday, works at Make Magazine, who was the first to observe, oh, that isn't like a homemade clock. That's a dis disassembled clock that you could buy at Radio Shack in the 80s. I even had one. It was a Micronta clock, I think. Um, that doesn't mean he's not a maker. That's how makers start. That's how you start. You take apart stuff. You assemble it. Richard Dawkins, of all people, weighed in saying, yeah, I think the guy was trying to go viral, that this was an intentional uh, viral thing, that he knew what the response would be. I don't know if I buy that either. Uh, listen, listen to this, Uncle Leo. Take that one step even deeper. Imagine foil on my head and say, what if he, Ahmed, is a Manchurian candidate? And you figure <laughs> the best way to get to the president is to get a Muslim on He'd the He'd be sure to have a clock with him that time. And then you get him to visit Facebook. He shuts down Facebook. He shuts yeah. down Twitter. He shuts down the White House. Propaganda, man. Yeah. The world is out wow. there. Did he, I mean, wow. a couple of questions. First of all, if he never, ever, if he always said, it's a clock, it's a clock, it's a clock, surely teachers must have looked at this, and apparently the teachers are, what is, okay, there's literacy if you don't know words, numeracy if you don't know numbers. What is if you don't understand technology at all? It, 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 the technology literacy. Technology literacy, illiterate, yeah. because they Tech looked literacy. at this right. and even thought it might be a bomb when there's, there's, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind Where's the explosive, right? There's nothing <laughs> that could blow up. So what it what it shows is that, unfortunately, he's got teachers who don't understand that this is what the inside of a clock looks like. They've never so gone inside you anything. Teach teachers, how, teachers should be taught how to build bombs so that they would know in the future what a bomb looks like. Yeah. And the police who said, it looks like a movie bomb to me... <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's just sad. So they knew. I, they figured out very quickly that it wasn't a bomb. Of course they knew it wasn't a bomb. They didn't clear they the school. That was a ridiculous thing. Why did, they, why did they take the guy away in handcuffs? Why didn't they say, false alarm, goodbye, thank well, you very much, go back to class, well, shut up? If he had, if they thought this, this kid was pretending it was a bomb, that it was a hoax, and was kind oh. of trying to scare people, would, then it might have been appropriate to do that, right? Mm. But apparently he said repeatedly, it's not a bomb, it's not a bomb, it's not a bomb. Um, you know, it's just sad. Like I said, I had to go take my little bits away from my daughter for a week. I'm like, we can't make anything. What? Like, you know, I just got to... You didn't do just gotta that. Back up. I did too. Paranoid, man. She's brown. She's brown Are you time. afraid that she'll bring something to school and the <laughs> same thing will happen to her? I, I do not let her take electronics to school, not because I was worried about yeah. that per se. I was more worried about either kids stealing the stuff because she's got cool things more so than right. anything else, but... You know, it, it's sad again. Yeah, but you, you have a daughter. You have a daughter who, gosh darn it, is wonderful, who is playing with electronics, who is using little bits, who is learning about that stuff. What kind of lesson, I hate to say, does she get out of us? She saw, she must have seen this story, right? Yeah. Well, she was really upset because she wants to be an engineer. And she was like, well, why did he get in trouble? Why is it such a big deal? Like, And, uh, you know, you try to explain to a kid, well, they thought it was something dangerous. And the first question a, a kid asks is the simple stuff. Well, when they found out it wasn't, what's the big deal? Why are we talking about it? And I say, I, I don't know. Is the, no, <laughs> is the number one That's, error here just a lack of common sense, really? I mean, isn't that really what's going on? They just took it too far. Like I said, if they would have just stopped... If you wouldn't have broken his rights, that's why when people talk about race, it's like they're like, it's like, okay, well, you're not supposed to be questioning this kid. You already knew it wasn't a bomb. He's asking for his parents. He's telling you what it's not, and you're still handcuffing him and grilling him. Like, come on. At some point, do your job. You're a police officer. You have a job to do. Rules to follow. Follow the rules. Maybe then it wouldn't have been such a big deal. But when you take it past yeah. a certain point, it's a problem. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. been? Uh uh, accused of driving while black? Of course. You get pulled over? All the time, nine times this year. I'm not going what? to have I haven't been pulled over what? in the last... I haven't been pulled over in the last two and a half months. But for the first six months of this year, I was pulled over on average every 17 days. Wow. I got one ticket out of those nine stops. They were just checking you out. Mm -hmm. I live I, in a very nice neighborhood, and I bought a yeah. new car, and apparently my car looks right. nice. Yeah, I have a friend in the same situation, he, driving well, be black, driving a Mercedes in a rich town, and he gets pulled over all the time. The guy was like, oh, your taillight's out. I'm like, it's a 2015, my taillight's aren't out. I was like, if you come back with a ticket for a taillight, I'm getting out and taking a videotape of it. He comes back, oh, I'll give you a warning for that taillight, get it fixed. And I'm like, okay, stuff like that happens. Did so, you read you know. um, 
Ta-Nehisi Coates book? No. Are you interested in reading it? I'm about to go look it up, so yes. If you're telling me I should he, read something, I yeah, guess Yeah, you should. Um, he wrote a book uh, for his son, basically. He's an African-American, uh, I think he's a, uh, is he a journalist? Is he an educator? Yeah, he's a staff writer at The Atlantic. Writer. Writer. Oh, hey, we got you back, Aaron. <laughs> Yay. I'm sure you have quite a few <laughs> things that you would like to say about this. And we, you guys kind of, you guys kind of covered it. All right. Anything to add? What do you, what do you, where do you come down on this? Is this, I mean, on the one hand, you could just say, look, What's that? I'm trying to be reasonable. Everybody got scared. The kid, okay, yeah, his name is Muhammad. Uh, he's brown. Uh, we don't know. Maybe he wears a turban at home at night. He made something that looks a little weird. Um, maybe we're scared. So we just want to check it out. I, I mean, the whole thing is really frustrating to watch out, but I think, or to, to watch it play out. But the thing that, that frustrates me the most about it um, is, is that these incidents continue to play out the exact same way on the internet. You know, there's outrage and then there's outrage to the outrage. Yeah. And then there are truth. Then there are truthers that come out right. and they have the, he wasn't a model citizen. He didn't make the talk. It? His parents <laughs> made it or yeah. whatever. And it, it's the same pattern and people on both sides of the, of the argument just reinforce their own beliefs. And it's just a re reflection of the filter bubble that we have on the internet. I just, I just Googled this as we were talking about it and the top stories now, because the original outrage has kind of died down because it happened earlier in the week. And the top stories now are all um, sort of like right wing truthers that are like, ah, Ahmed didn't make the clock. And this is, uh, you know, this is just another sort of like liberal uprising, all of this stuff. And it, it's just sort of frustrating to watch play out because as soon as it happened, I was just like, oh, brother, here it goes. Yep. <laughs> Every, everybody's got to get their clicks. And it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like anyone really learned anything. It doesn't feel like this is not going to happen again now as a result of this. It's going to happen again, and that's you know that's why I said it's just sad. When I'm sitting there like when you say like whether well, it's racist, I was like the problem is is that it was a problem. Like you know okay as a school you were scared. Okay, do your job, follow procedure, and end it. But taking it to the umpteenth degree is the problem. You know, because kids right. get, I've had kids get arrested in my school for all kinds of stuff. I've had a kid in yep. my high school who had a gun. And guess what? The cops came, they arrested him. It was over in 30 seconds. I had another kid who had a, a pocket comb knife. They realized it wasn't a knife. The cops left. Everybody was fine. There was never a big deal about it. But when you take it and you handcuff a kid, once you already know the problem is over, like those are the things where it's like, well, now we got right. Facebook and there's a Facebook mom group that says, not my child, never again. And they've got like a... <laughs> billion people to go like you said the way it plays out it's just like who needs their and it clicks? becomes national news yeah yeah i need clicks for it i need clicks against it i need clicks in the middle i need clicks for the clicks that you got earlier so let's get new clicks <laughs> everybody take, making money uncle leo take that ad blocker <laughs> takes on takes on takes on takes <laughs> yes it's kind of sad to me you know i was uh somebody posted on facebook some video from the um debate in new hampshire between george hw bush and ronald reagan and somebody asked mm -hmm. Did you see that video? Somebody asked Bush, uh, do you think uh, illegal immigrants' kids should be allowed to go to school in Texas? And and Bush says, they're good people. These are good families. I'd hate to see an eight-year-old not get an education. Uh, we got to work this out. We got to find a way. These these uh, these uh, illegal immigrants are providing much-needed labor. Um, we got to find a way to... And then Reagan, and you're expecting Reagan to come in. He says, no. He, <laughs> he says... Uh, um, Rather than talking about putting up a fence, why don't we work out some recognition for our mutual problems? Let's open the border both ways between us and Mexico. Right. It's like, what what universe are they in? This was only 35 years ago. This was the icon of the conservative party, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. And they're both like saying, well, yeah, you know, these these kids deserve an education. These immigrants are hardworking, honest people. I mean, it's really fascinating to see how it's all flipped. I'm what confused. happened? By the, by the way, I love the headline on that story that you just showed. Uh, it, it was, you, you will not, not believe. believe. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, BuzzFeed. Actually, right. it's, uh, it's, it's a left-wing thinkprogress.org, but they've clearly <laughs> learned, haven't they? Yeah. The best way to get clicks, you will not believe how Reagan responded. Like I said, I don't. I don't believe it. That's crazy. Well, but, it, but you know, I remember it. <laughs> And, and you do too, again. Larry. And uh, and the thing is, it's like I a frog. Knew Ronald and, Reagan, yeah. It's a, a frog, I, I, frog in I, boiling know. water. It, 
you don't notice this because it's so gradual. But when you look at the change uh, between, like, this Ahmed story and this, we, we live in a different world. You knew Reagan? I, yeah, he was, a, he was a governor of California when I was a student activist at Berkeley. And we crossed uh, paths on a few occasions, uh, opposite side of, a, of an important uh, political issue that we argued about and fought about. And uh, ultimately, he won because he was governor. But at the end of the day, I got a chance to, to debate him. And it was a very civil, good conversation. I thought he was a, one of the nicest guys I ever met. I didn't agree with him on anything, but, but, but that, I thought he was a, boy, a decent guy. has that changed? Guy. It's, it, it's gone yeah. from uh, this, you, could dis you have different disagreement, but you can yeah. talk it out. And uh, we right. all agree that we want to make this uh, the nation the best nation it can be. And we have different ideas about that to exactly. this, which, which is not working. Uh, Uncle Leo, let me educate you on the world real quick, okay? Would you please, because so, I am baffled. The, you, the world is the best, worst place in the world, okay? <laughs> so when you as a person sit there and say, oh, well, back in my day, yeah. whenever somebody tells me it's not like the good old days, and oh, I'm thinking, They weren't when? good old days for when, your people. <laughs> so I'm, thinking, I'm thinking, when? Was it slavery? <laughs> or, or was it the Depression? Yeah. Or was it when, well, women, uh, when women went to work when we were in World War II and they had jobs and the men came back and said, get back in the kitchen. I'm not going to let you vote for 30 years. Hey, black men, you can use our bathrooms, but don't touch our women. It's against the law to marry a woman out of your race. Like, when was it? cool yeah like, no you're right it, 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 like the yeah, world true. is ne like it's never been like this whole uh human being race let's get together there's always someone to hate so as much as everything's cool i mean unless you've been a white male for the last two thousand years it's it's been pretty rough for everybody well, else. well actually I mean, actually I owen i, saying, I have though. been a white male for the last two thousand years you have let me been. tell you it's fabulous it's pretty good it's pretty all right <laughs> it's, it's all right <laughs> You know, I think his point. I think his point still stands, though. That that it's amazing that two very conservative politicians were able to have reasonable answers and amazing. actually a reasonable yeah. debate amazing. on a hot button topic. Right now, that's not happening. When you look at the debate, far from it. Far from it. Uh, and and you know, Nixon had a health care plan people. that was similar to Obama. I know. I know. Nobody talks hey, about so that. So did Mitt either. Romney, for that matter. Yep. Right. In yeah. Massachusetts. <laughs> Well, I think he invented that, Obamacare. Well, that's the thing that cracks me up the most because you you can't. That's when you say how it flips. Okay, so re Republicans are really strong on one note. Then a Democrat says, "Oh wow, they're really killing it on that note." I'm going to start saying the same yeah. thing. Then once they pull their votes away, now you've got to go the opposite because you need to stand out. So these people are saying the same things and fighting each other. I'm watching a Republican debate. Half of them are agreeing. I forget which one guy said he's like. We we all agree. Why are we arguing with each other? Everyone because one same only thing. one of us can win. Exactly, <laughs> right. and it's that a game, and it's horrible, yeah. and it's just the system. Yeah, and they also have to play to their base. They're not they're not talking to you. They're talking to the no, base. Talking and then once they get the nomination, then hopefully they talk to you and me and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but but the problem is that we all remember what they said when they were talking no. to the base. And now you know. I want to bring that up. Why I talk so much about iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> and and Android phones and oh isn't that cool that Windows 10 because this is so simple it's so clean I'm I mean we can have fights but the been, fights don't matter religious war. thank you've you for pulling us out of the spiral of despair <laughs> yes we, we <laughs> work in the toy store and you know what the only thing we can argue about is which toy is better Right, but you've got. Haven't you ever and gotten hate mail from somebody who doesn't like the operating system that you happen to be talking about today? I got. I mean, somebody I, said I should be reamed with a red hot poker because get ready for this. I suggested he upgrade to Windows 10, and he had a bad experience. <laughs> he yeah. said, "You're not the tech guy. You're just some tech guy." I'm never listening to you again. <laughs> did, he didn't accuse you of being on Microsoft payroll. He wanted to that's, do that's bodily, easy. do me bodily. Oh, I get that all the time. Yeah, uh, I mean, Microsoft, it is, it is true that that people I, I, I've noticed in the comment section of even our website, um, the only thing that gets people as like fired up and crazy as uh, politics is is Apple uh, iOS versus Android. Oh, oh, um, right. It's basically I, it's the tech world's equivalent of that. And the, right. and the really best part to me. Yeah, you know, all you have to do is attack Apple, and you're going to get a ton of hits from Apple fanboys who are going to be attacking you for attacking Apple. But it doesn't matter because you're getting the hits, and you can monetize those hits. So that, that's the formula to successful tech journalism. Uh, you you see a lot of people flip flop on that same thing too. Like I'm flip flopping. I, I'm ready to I flip flop. Hate Apple. Next week you're like, I yeah. love Apple. You know what? And it just depends get ready. On the week. I've been using Android for the last two or three iPhone generations. I really I have a Note Five right now. 
I am. I think the new iPhone 6S is gonna. It's. I know. Shocking. It's gonna what? It's gonna I what? think I'm gonna. What? I think it's gonna be my new phone. It, it's the same phone have? as all the other phones. Wait so a minute. What, is that what? it? No, that's the Edge. What, what do you have? This is the Edge 6 Plus. I really edge. like the, that. I have the little Edge, yeah. and then I have the Note 5. Edge. Yep. How is this new iPhone okay. going to do anything different okay. for you? I'll tell you. Apple. I'll tell you why yeah. I'm so excited. Now, of course. Reality will set in the minute I start using it, and then I'll, yes, yes, I may, I may in six months say, you know, I hate this thing. Three months tops. But Three okay, months tops. you know what? My one of the there are a few things that really were the worst. One was the stupid keyboard <laughs> was always uppercase. This is not a selectric. You can go lowercase when you're in lowercase and uppercase. Why does the Apple? Why did the Apple keyboard never reflect the status of the shift lock key? And it was the. It's not a minor thing because I was always mistyping uh, passwords and stuff. It was like impossible. Was wait a minute? Don't put don't put a dot there. What was? It? Oh God! I got to retype the whole thing. Nitpick so, issue. Next. That is not a nitpick issue. That is a <laughs> lifestyle issue. Anyway, they fixed it. Your caps lock lifestyle. They I, fixed I, it. Although I, I gotta I, love I'm John sure Gruber Justice because John made a vote on it. John, I, I love changed. John Gruber because yeah. he says, you know, I don't like this. Uh, I want to go back to the all caps thing. <laughs> <laughs> But you can, by the way. It's a setting. Next. Number two. Now, I got a lot of them. Five. I need five. Quick. Number Let's two. Go. Okay. I I like the fact that Android has a back button. On the yeah. on the on the iOS, if you're in an application, yeah. really the only thing you can do is press home and get out of the whole thing back to the top. Uh, with the yes. back button, you can step back through uh, your actions. Seems or you can like, hit the arrow if the app is made properly and go back, but that's never. But they never. Anything. But every and that's the other problem with iOS. Every app has a different UI, and you can't. I mean, it's like what is? I don't know. Snap. <laughs> I, look I, at Snapchat. I am I too old for Snapchat? Is that the I mean, problem? You are too old for Snapchat. When you tell me you're on Snapchat, <laughs> I want to know what you're doing on Snapchat. I'll show and you. Your Snapchats need to be. No, so they blocked. purposely they purposely Snapchat. make it hard for people to figure out because they want their audience to stay young. Otherwise, advertisers <laughs> won't be won't be wanting to spend money on Snapchat. If all of us start using it, they're gonna be they're, it's gonna be less attractive, and but, the valuation is not gonna remotely reflect what it is. Wait a minute. I wait a minute. Aaron. When you say people, Aaron. you mean old people. Yes, you people. <laughs> You, you people. people. <laughs> Uncle you people. I mean, Leo, I can't, Uncle Larry, you people. I can't okay. figure it out okay, either. I'm not, I, 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 Snapchat I asked my son. Me. My son's 21. He says, well, no, you just swipe left and it's obvious. No, it's not obvious. <laughs> all, all I know is when somebody over my age took me, my mom told me she was on Snapchat, I almost what? threw a phone in the pool. Uh -oh. I'm like, what you doing on Snapchat? Oh, but can, you snapping? can you do, you wait a minute, can you, can you, let's see, can you do this on Snapchat? Can you do... Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Oh, it stopped. Let me go. Oh, you get the the devil face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They took the devil face out. In Did fact, they? it looks like they just took the rainbow out. I think it has oh, something to do with the rainbow puke. Block. The rainbow puke is gone. Mm. Oh, really? That was there last week. That was a fan favorite. They change. Yeah, they change it all the time. That's yeah. it's gone. What? <laughs> See, I figured this out. I ain't as old as I look. <gasps> I got the Snapchat. Oh, there you go. Snapchats. I'm making the Snapchats right now. Snapchat. I'm making a Snapchat. Look at me. <laughs> I'm beautiful. Wait, what happened? Okay. Um, <laughs> that way, that's pretty much how it happens with me. Look, I'm doing. Oh, what happened? Just oh. what, what, just... the other thing you, what are the other things you don't like? About, you like about Android over iOS? I, okay. I in I'm going to keep going. So back button. But yeah. now the new iOS with Snap Crackle Pop has a back button. I think I'm told. In a way, you can go backwards. Peak pop, peak pop, and something or other. You can call it peak and pop. I'm calling it snap peak crackle pop. pop. Well, that's trademarked. <laughs> um, what else? You might be sued for that. <laughs> Eight megapixel camera. Everybody has 16 or more. 21 on the Moto X Pure. Yeah. Finally, the 12, and I think the 12 is going to be really, really good. Um, what else? What else? I why else? Did, oh, I didn't. Okay, and they haven't fixed this, made. by the way. The biggest problem with iOS is that it's it's constipated launcher and you can't replace it. That springboard is a grid of icons. That's all. You can't have anything else. And you have to, I mean, that's really primitive. Well, and Apple doesn't let you use a third-party launcher as Android does. So if you don't like the UI, you have to use something else. The other option is, and I don't know if you can see this, but if you push this little button on an Android, this, this where is it? The little thing that looks like a bunch of grid, you get all of your apps in alphabetical order. Right. And with 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 the iOS, you got to hunt around for the app or search for the app, 
and, and there isn't a way to alphabetize and them that I'm aware of. I, right, no, and I was talking before the show. No, and you can't sort a folder. The folder, everything about the springboard, the the, the, the finder, the UI is really primitive. It hasn't changed much since the beginning, and, it, and that needs to be right. improved. They did not fix that in iOS 9, but that's fine because I'm, I'm excited about Snap, Crackle, Pop. I'm excited about uh, the camera, and I can't, this is the real reason, I can't do Facebook mentions on Android. It's only on iOS. So. The, the camera is the biggest deal out of those list of I think so said. too. I agree. Um, but all the, I don't know. I'm Are you an iPhone? Dude, you're I'm, an, I'm, no, you're no, an iPhone no, guy. I'm, I'm, I'm appled out. I got the MacBook Pro. I got a yeah. Mac Mini. I got a Mac Pro. I got, every, yeah. I'm appled Apple. But I do know the Android those is better headphones? for a lot of things. No, onboarding. Never, never. Onboarding. So, uh, I, you know, I here. set up an, a, uh, an iPad Mini. I'm yeah. practicing for Friday when my new iPhone comes. So I set up the new iPod, iPad Mini 4. It takes hours because... Uh, for, especially from a clean install, you have to read down, figure out what apps you have to. There, you know, LastPass can't automatically fill in passwords as it can on Android because Apple won't let it. Apple's so you know security conscious; they ask you to enter your password like again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And my password, because I'm security conscious, is a long random string of up or lower punctuation all over the place, and up so down, it's, up, down, left, right, left, it's right, very frustrating. That's actually start. a good password. I should use that. Um, anyway, um, I, I, I actually am very excited about the new iPhone. Are you guys excited? And, oh, here's another thing. Mine's going to be in rose gold. Mm. Yeah, I ordered just, rose gold. That's just guy. send it to me. To, are you buying a little uh, update program or are you paying for it outright? Um, well, I have to pay for it outright. Well, then just send it to me in three months when you're done with it. Because I'm not going to waste time. <laughs> I will. Just send Owen, me yours. you're on the list. <laughs> I, I, rose gold. You know what, though? It ain't rose gold. It's no. pink. It's pink. <laughs> it's kind of pinkish, yeah. Well, pinkish. No, no, it's you know, pink, pink. Pink. That, pink. That was the first Apple announcement I've ever that I've seen where people were reminded to clap like monkeys. Like every time mm -hmm. he would say something, normally it's <gasps> <gasps> this time he had to stop for a second, like, I said rose gold. <laughs> oh yeah. Whoa, yes. yeah. Well, well, I'll tell you this. I was actually in the pencil. room. Did you not hear There's what something I said? interesting? Pencil. There's something yeah. interesting about that event. Um, normally, Apple uh, is in a venue with maybe 500 people, and most right. of them are the press. A small number are Apple employees. Right. This time, they chose a giant venue. 1,500 people were seated. A thousand of those were Apple employees. So, if right. you notice tumultuous applause, did you go to it, Larry? I was there, yeah, and I did notice there were a huge number of employees sitting sitting in the back. And I made the mistake of getting in the middle of a row, which was a problem because <laughs> I actually had a, a live broadcast at 12:03 that I couldn't get to because they went on and on and on. And then we had to listen to three songs. It was from two and a half Republic. hours. No, it was three hours and 20 minutes. Leo. What? It, it, yeah, it was three hours and 20 <laughs> That's minutes. That's longer than Interstellar. Yeah, no, it was worse than the Republican debate. Or maybe I'm getting <laughs> that was stuff. interminable. Uh, maybe, no, maybe I'm maybe I'm getting the Republican debate in the and the iPhone. I think you are because I went to <laughs> dinner. I, they were yeah, debating. I watched about right, first half hour and then I went to dinner and I got home and they're still they're still debating. Yeah, no, you're right. The iPhone about it was the two Apple and a half hours, hours twenty yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I, I'm not sure where I learned more: the Republican <laughs> debate or the Apple announcement. Are you <laughs> muted again, Aaron, or can we hear you? I think I'm still okay. here. I, I, I also my my phone is um an, an a cracked iPhone five. Oh, so Aaron. So I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a late adopter here. I don't have a lot to Aaron. add to this conversation. Aaron, oh, Aaron, you oh, did warn me. You did warn I am me. A I'm a tech writer. I'm a tech writer. Do you writer, have a? You could, tell me, you have an Apple Watch. No. I, <laughs> look, look. Well, I don't you talk cool to Aaron that way. Aaron, Aaron is a survivor. Aaron, Aaron is the exact model of a human being, a regular person in the world. She can, she gonna use this phone to the wheels fall off. Aaron, That's how good Apple. Yeah. I know That's you're not a white male, but at least you could like, have an Apple Watch. Oh my God. No, well, Aaron, you know I try. I tried a Fitbit for a little while, uh, the, the the latest Fitbit that they had, and I realized that I just don't I, I don't I like to sort of put my phone away when I go home, and I yes. don't look at it all the time. I, I'm I I don't like that much technology in my life, even though I am a tech writer. Um, you know, the watch to me was just another thing that I would have to like another place for awful notifications that I don't want in my I life. I think that that actually is a really important point. People <laughs> say, "Oh, I love the Apple Watch. I have one, but I don't. I'm not wearing it. I love it because I keep." But do you really want to be notified all the time See, and told to stand this, up? And I mean, it's really intrusive. When I tell I mean, you, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not saying it's not making people's lives better, and that in five years from now we're not all going to have one. But I'm just not racing to get there. I don't, you know, I sort of uh, feel a little nostalgia for times when people can't get in touch with me. 
Oh my God. See, Aaron, look, see your look, bike right. I, I, Is that your bike I, back there? I just ignore yes. people when I want those nostalgic times. When I want to go back to the times when I didn't have a phone, I, I just don't answer it. I look at people all the time. They be sitting out right from my front door. I see your TV on. I see you in the chair, and I'm calling you. <laughs> but I'm busy, so you're going to have don't to take, <laughs> That takes a special level of zen, though, because oh. I, I start thinking in my mind, like, what could it be? Oh, no. Like, what if someone's in trouble? What if there's breaking news? What if, like, I need okay. to get in touch with somebody? And it, and it creates anxiety that wasn't there if I so just do you answer, have So, Aaron, do you answer the phone every time it rings? No, no. But I, I also don't hear it. It's across right. the room. I left it in my purse. That's why you need an Apple Watch. If if you need <laughs> me, the text message, one. the text message needs to be nine one or dying. Like yeah. you need to type those two yeah. things in for me to know. Otherwise, I don't. I supposed to know you died. You didn't say nothing. You just <laughs> called and called and called. I, if you could call me twenty two times, you can leave one of the messages saying I've been shot. Help me out. I'm on Third Street. I'm Wait, just is that, saying, a, is that a watch, an Apple watch that I see on your wrist? I can't. Who's watching I can't apples? I don't have any apples. I went to go buy some green apples, but the store was out. What, you, what are you about? wearing? What are you wearing on your wrist there? What is that? <laughs> Show us. That's an Apple freaking watch, you liar. <laughs> hey, look, you look, lying look, I, liar. I, I, Burn him. I, I, He's I, a witch. Look, I said, I don't like, I mind being notified. Notify me. I'm just not going to answer it. <laughs> you <laughs> probably, though, you probably, Owen, have tuned it down, right? You, you've you like, you've turned off a lot of the notifications. I, I only have like 10 things on here. The yeah. best thing is when I go and I'm cooking in the kitchen, I leave my phone up in the office and somebody texts me, I can look at it and ignore right. it. If somebody's yeah. calling me and I want to talk to them, I can answer it. It's just the option. It's supposed to run in my, I see, I should be running upstairs anyway, I'm big. But instead of me running back over <laughs> to get my phone. I can just sit back and keep doing what I'm doing. So you it's know, less connection, you know, about, not more connection. We're talking about iOS versus Android. One of the things I hate about Android is, like you, Leo, I change phones like some people change underwear. Yeah. And every time I get a new phone, by default, all of the notifications are on. Right. So I'm sleeping and somebody sends me a tweet or a Facebook message or an email and my phone starts making noise. And then I have to sort of throw it in the bathtub or something to get it to be quiet. And then eventually I figure out how to turn off the notifications, which is not easy. It actually is very hard to know how to do all that. And why can't they just say, you know, we're going we're gonna to ring you if a phone call comes in, maybe notify you if you have a text message. And if you want to hear about the next time somebody sends you a Facebook message, then you got to go turn it on. Actually, but why, you're, what you're really pinpointing. Oh, no, no, no. Developers don't want that. Like Google and Apple, <laughs> yeah, they need to have, keep developers happy and they need to have people building apps on their on their ecosystem so people, you know, keep downloading apps and their app stores and are popular. And their ecosystems. Do not disturb. Do not disturb. Well, that's one thing Apple did do, right? There's a physical switch on the iPhone. You switch it yeah. and then everything's silent, right? Yeah. Yes, unless it's an emergency or they're in your special yeah. contacts. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and I have to say that they calls. have the part of what what you're really saying, Larry, is not what you think you're saying. What you're really saying is there are so many different flavors of Android because everybody customizes it that That's it's not immediately apparent how to do this because pure lollipop has a very simple do not disturb function. You press the down arrow, you sw swipe it all the right, you'll get no notifications. Um, but the problem but you might is, want some notifications. Well, there's three there's three settings. There's uh, Jason right. Howell, who's the host of All About Android, can help me here. There's nothing, there's important, and then there's all. Yeah, right? priority is that priority. middle step. Right. And that's like, you know, starred contacts and certain notifications don't I get I would love to see do. a physical switch like Apple has. Actually, the OnePlus 2 has a three-setting physical switch that, that mimics that, where no notifications, mm -hmm. priority notifications, and all. But, but so, Larry, you can do that, and you can actually do it fairly easily. Yeah. The problem is... Every version of Android's just a little bit different. Right. Every Samsung's just a little bit different from you know, HTC's a little bit different from LG, so it's not always obvious how to do that. Right. Hey, I want to take I a break. We, every time somebody tweets. Yes. No, I right. always I turn off the tweets. I don't want to hear tweets. I don't want and by the way, who is it that wants a notification every time an email comes in? Don't right, want, right exactly. Who is that person? Because I want to be that person. The he loneliest get, person yes. gets one email a day. Yes. <laughs> oh my God! I got an email. I get I get notified. What? Mm -hmm. Don't you Never get mind. like eight hundred messages a minute? No. Nobody oh. likes me. We got to get you some more friends. Please. <laughs> Please. Sign Seriously. you up for our mailing list. I, every time I've all of the uh, email programs, of course, by default, notifications are on. Every time I get an email, I'm going to get a buzz. But that would be buzzing. Every five minutes, I get 30 buzzes because, you know, it goes out, gets the mail, and there's new. So I just don't understand who doesn't get email. You don't get email, Owen? No, I'm joking. My lights blink in my bedroom and in yeah, the kitchen yeah. when I get tweets. And it gives me epilepsy attack in the middle oh, of the night when I randomly get hue? a tweet. You have Hue? Do you have those Hue lights blinking? Yeah, yeah. Do you use if this, then that to do that? Yes, sir. Oh, you're a, such a nerd.
<laughs> well, you know, <laughs> trying to be as Caucasian male as possible, <laughs> Uncle Leo. Nicely you know. done. Are you, are you worried about your house getting hacked? No. I got pit bulls for that. See? Red lights. <laughs> This Blue is light, this. purple light. I used to be like <laughs> you, <laughs> Owen. Yeah. I Each, used to oh be like gosh. you and think that that was cool. It is cool. It is I've not got cool. An eight-year-old daughter who sleeps under her. She's got Darth Vader over her bed, and she's got a, oh. a light. She makes it purple. Nobody and it looks wants, like Darth Vader is looking upon nobody, her every night when she goes Nobody to sleep. older than ten wants a purple light. I'm six years old. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Boom! America. <laughs> Ad, please. Uh, you got it. Thank you, Owen. You have a very good instinct for when to put an ad in. Owen J.J. Stone, O-Doctor, is with us. Love to have you on. IQMZ.com is his mystery website. I don't know what's there, but you should check it out. Larry Maggot here from CBS, the radio, the good CBS, and connectsafely.org, <laughs> safekids.com, and from Fortune Magazine, Erin Griffith is also here. She's got a very nice microphone stand and no <laughs> Apple Watch. Do, do you, you know, in New York, you got to, I don't know how you get around in New York. You got to ride a bike, right? Because. You see my bike's here in the background. Yes. Uh, this one is You're mine. Lovely. My fiance, oh my God. So. It takes half an hour to go five blocks. I also do, I also do city bike. I, j I'm I a like the city bike. That, so. Yeah, I like the city yeah. bike. Yeah, I've done that. But yep. don't you feel you're taking your life in your hands a little? Um, bit. It's a little. It's it's you know exhilarating. Yes. You know I don't, I don't get a lot of, of thrills fear. as a tech journalist in my life. I gotta, gotta a, take some risks. Yes, it's uh, exciting. <laughs> I you know I haven't been in New York in about uh, two years, and it seems like the traffic is much Wait, worse. Wait, you than, were just there two weeks ago. No, when that's we what met. I'm saying. That was the first time in two years. <laughs> but okay. where do you live? L.A. Right? I, no. No, I, I live was, in Brooklyn. Yes. First time I've been there in two years. And um, I, I said, the traffic seems so much worse. And somebody told me, you know what it is? It's Uber. Yeah. There's Ubers everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> More Ubers than the taxi street. cabs. It's worse than cabs. I don't know about that. I would, I would argue that it's uh, it's all, the, I mean, um, this is a good thing, but it's all the, uh, the bike lanes and the parks oh. that Bloomberg put in, which it cuts off, you know, oh, a lot of right. traffic. Like he's, right, he's actually cut off the lines of traffic. Now. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's like food. There's food courts and all kinds of oh, things. And it's right. it's nice. It's really really nice. But that means that Times Square, which was once like seven lanes of traffic, is now right. basically one. I did notice that. And yeah. So that right. pushes the congestion all out to the to the sides. Oh, that's interesting. I walk everywhere in New York. I I can walk almost anywhere in Midtown Manhattan. I love walking in New York. Within a half an hour. <laughs> my mis I, I, I my mistake was we were staying down at Battery Park. And it's a half an hour okay. to get just to that's far, yeah. Just to just to Canal Street. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're in the middle. Like you're, I'll walk from uh, you know from Penn Station to CBS, and I can get there faster walking than I yes. can waiting for a cab half that's the right. time. Subway and walking. That's the only way to get around in New York. Right. Exactly. Well, now that we've solved that, uh, let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> audiobooks. See, if you drove a lot, Aaron, you would know a lot more about Audible.com. Anybody who spends time in the car, uh, I used to commute. It was, you know, at best, it was two hours a day. And if there was traffic, four hours a day in the car. And for 13 years, I did that. And I would be dead now, or I would have killed somebody and be in jail now if it weren't for audible.com. I signed up for Audible in 2000 and started listening to books. And my whole life changed because I, first of all, I don't have the road rage. I don't mind being in traffic. In fact, sometimes I'd get home and I'd sit in the driveway till I finished the chapter or drive around the block. You get so engaged in audiobooks. They're so fun that you can't, it's just, I can't even explain it. You've got to try it. That's why we've arranged it a free trial, two books free for you at audible.com slash twit two. So uh, Audible has more than 180,000 books every, you know, nowadays, every, uh, oh, there's a new Jonathan Franz and I got to listen to that. Uh, every, um, see, this is what happens to me. As soon as I go to Audible, I go, oh, there's a new, oh, I got to get that. And you just put it on your, uh, your uh, uh, my next listen or your wish list, whatever. And uh, next time I'll get that. Two books a month is nice. We're going to set you up. Your first month is free. So your first two books are free. Uh, I was just talking with John about a science fiction book that we're reading. It is All the Rage Now by a guy named Chi, Shu, Chi Shin Lu, L-I-U. Um, it is amazing. And uh, the first, it's a trilogy. The first two books are on Audible. And I figure by the time I get to the last one, 
um, it will be uh, it will be uh, available to listen to. It is called. Let me pull it up for you. Lou L I U C I X I N. The three body problems. The first of these. He is uh, Chinese. In fact, it's fascinating because it begins with the Cultural Revolution in 1965. And, uh, and what happens, uh, I don't want to know, I haven't read enough to give you a spoiler. But what the, prince, the, the, the premise of this sci-fi book is, we send a message to an alien civilization saying, we're here, and they say, great, we'll be right there to take over your world and destroy you. But it turns out they're so far away, it's going to take them 450 years. So what is the reaction of the planet Earth knowing that in 450 years, a technologically superior alien race will arrive to destroy them? And uh, as you might imagine, this is a great premise for a book. I'm loving it. Now, there are two books, so you can use your Audible uh, subscription right now, audible.com slash twit2. You'll be signing up for the Platinum Plan. That means you get two credits in the first month. You also get the Daily Digest of the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times. You can listen to them. I'm not saying this is the only book to pick. There's quite a lot of good books on there. Ender's Game, we were just talking about that. What a great book. Uh, in fact, their science fiction collection is phenomenal. It wasn't when I joined, but Audible realized that there were so many great science fiction books that were never recorded because the audiobooks weren't a thing in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. So they went back. They created the Audible Frontiers program to record Isaac Asimov and Robert Heinlein and Jerry Pornell and Niven, the, the great science fiction book books. And now they have these wonderful editions of the classics. It's a great way to listen to science fiction, but also fact. I listen to a lot of history. Uh, also um, biography, celebrity biographies. George Carlin's got a new one, a Carlin home companion growing up with George. Actually, it's his daughter, uh, Kelly. Uh, there's so many great books on Audible. I want you to try it right now. Audible.com slash twit2. You'll sign up for the Platinum Plan. It's free for the first... Oh, Chrissy Hines got a bio. I love her. Narrated by Rosanna Arquette. Now, that is a perfect match. If you like The Pretenders... Now, see, I got to put this on my, uh, my, my wish list. That's a good one. This happens every time I go to audible.com slash twit2. Two free books. You can cancel anytime in the first... 30 days, you'll pay nothing, but those books are yours to keep. Audible.com slash twit2. We thank Audible for their support of This Week in Tech. Doesn't that look good? All right. <clears throat> Moving on. Now I'm having fun. I love, I love having you on, Owen. Aaron, it's, you're fitting right into this crazy panel. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm doing my best. You're doing great. <laughs> Larry Maggot, just to have another beer and relax. We're just we're just lucky yeah. to have Uncle Larry here. Water, He's water. big time. <laughs> this is sponsored by California Water. California Water. They they pay That's me. That's the last of it, right there. Don't drink That's that. It. Save that. <laughs> we don't have any more. <laughs> that smells like vodka to me, Uncle Larry. You can buy this. That smells like vodka to me. <laughs> it smells like Dean Spirit. Stick around. Um, well, you know, now that water is so scarce, maybe the vodka. I hear. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a tech subject, but apparently we're going to have a very wet winter, the El Nino yep. year this Nino. year, right? Right. In fact, we may, we may wash away. <laughs> Maybe nothing left, but the drought will be over, so that's a good thing. Yep. I don't have a lawn anymore. My lawn is brown. Brown is a new green. We took ours out. But I do have, I, I do have this thing called the rain machine, which my, my wife has a bunch of plants, and so it now- It simulates rain? Well, no, what it does... It confuses it does, the plants. It, it has a Wi-Fi adapter, so it knows the weather, and it actually adjusts the amount of water based on the humidity and whether it's oh. raining or not raining. So we'll never water our plants during a rainstorm because the the water sprinkling controller is smart enough to know whether it's raining wow, or not. Wow, that's smart. Very sure, very cool. It just took it, it took me 10 minutes to install it. I just I need that. my old water controller. Well, you can get one. The rain machine. Uh, I'll hook you up with their PR person. No, no, I don't do that. I buy everything because I want to be broke when I die. Is that oh, well, then Uncle Leo, then you should go have these with me on my land in Montana. Really? Um, what are you buying? Buying, buying hundred acres, trying to get that new beachfront property because where you're living, <laughs> there's a thing called earthquakes, tsunamis, and Montana. fires and droughts. So Montana is the new LA, bro. Like, wait, <laughs> Montana. Montana, yeah. Montana, you're gonna fall off into the ocean, bro. And then we got Montana. Prime beach property, 100 acres. We get like, like 50 grade. That's nothing. 
Actually, Stop it, Uncle Leo. <laughs> you know where all the bidet men are from? All these kind of crazy fanatic. No, you know, no, no. Like you're, you're thinking of uh, Idaho. Idaho. I think they're all over the place. Oh. Actually, Montana. Nobody, from. nobody does anything. In Montana. We're buying so much land. We won't even see people. It doesn't even matter if there's crazy people. Where we got, we got 100, 200 acres. We don't even know anybody. We got a lake, probably a mountain, and some mooses. Just give me the money. I'll take care of it. So speaking of uh, the Apple Watch, uh, Apple was supposed to release, uh, when it did an iOS 9 update on Wednesday, it was also supposed to release, release Watch OS 2, a major update. They didn't put it out. They said, there's a bug. We'll get back to you later. I think kudos to Apple for not uh, not pushing this. Yeah, at least they caught it instead of the whole internet world catching it and it being a story for eight weeks. Right. They uh, they have you know iOS nine was beta was public beta for a long time so uh, presumably where they were able to squash any bugs there aren't any major bug reports uh, although a lot of people having compatibility issues and of course as inevitably happens uh, uh, some people are having bad installs and so forth but when you have oh, what is it 150 million users 12 percent of them installed at what uh, iOS nine in the first two days 12 percent. Watch OS not so fast. Uh, they say uh, we'll release it shortly. Don't yeah. know what that means. Makes sense. You know, it's on the one hand, I understand why you want to give out a date. It gets everybody excited. It kind of uh, concentrates the mind on the uh, programmers. But programming is such, it's, you can't, you don't know when it's going to be ready. You should just ship it when it's ready. Amazon Web Service is down. Did you uh, did anybody have trouble buying anything on Amazon uh, this this morning? My problem is I buy too much stuff on Amazon. <laughs> the opposite. Actually, it's probably good when it's down. It's probably a blessing in my case. Well, but let me tell you what happened. It also took down Netflix, Reddit, and Medium. Lots of people use Amazon uh, Web Services. There was a big outage. Mostly, I think, affected the uh, Northeast. Yeah, I was going to say Netflix was messed up earlier. Yeah. I was trying to log into my Amazon Music account this morning. It was just timed out, and I thought it was me. I didn't. Th I, you never think of Amazon being down, right? Um, That's the most exciting thing to happen every time Amazon Web Services go down. Is that everyone says, "Oh, whoa! Amazon has this hosting business, and it's huge." <laughs> and they and they have Netflix as a client, and they have all these other companies that rely on Amazon. What? I think they do it Amazon's as like, a, like this advertising. sleeping giant. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's their advertising. <laughs> hey, guys. Remember just, when you talk about cloud? Talk about us, too. Let's just flip that switch every once in a while. Just remind people that uh, oh. Social Flow, Alexa, Reddit, Nest. Yes, your 15, thermostat was out. Product 15 Hunt. 15 minutes off. Medium. Yeah, a little break. Um, Isn't that amazing? I mean, the thermostat that we have, which we probably bought in, you know, 1942, doesn't go down when the Internet goes down. It doesn't <laughs> even require anything. It just It just works. <laughs> How do you, you know, live? Coming in my my thermostat keeps my house hot when I'm gone. And I remember <laughs> like when I used to come home and sweat and the house was 900 right. degrees and, and you come home to a cool home. It's ridiculous. I mean, a thermostat is a, it's a pretty simple thing, right? It, it, it measures the temperature and it turns the heat on when it gets to a certain temperature, the air conditioning off when it gets... It, it doesn't require a cloud connection to turn thermostats on and off. And I know all the great things that Nest does, but I'm... I'm just not, not sold on that. I mean, not all I, of us I'm are as well as you, Uncle Larry. I need my bill adjusted. I like to see my little leaf that's saying I saved 34% over my last paying period, okay? It's saving me money. That's the is bottom it, line. Is it really? Do you notice that? Uh, it is. My bill has dropped half of what it was wow. before. I it. Now, why that? How, how do you, because you have <laughs> better control over your, your so, heat? So I have better control. Case in point, when you turn on the regular thermostat, I like to sleep when it's cold. So if I turn the air conditioning on, I just bury it at like 64 or 70 or whatever. And then sometimes, oh, it's too cold. Well, I can change it from my bed, but then it starts to know. Okay, well, in the morning when he wakes up, he likes it warmer. So it cuts the air off. Instead of it running until I get up out of bed to turn it, it does it on its own. So Did you, you didn't have to teach it? Heat. It figured out what it, you no, want? It, le it learns over time. Same thing with the heat. I like it cold. So in the wintertime, I don't have the heat on at night because I sleep with the windows open. But when I get up in the morning, it turns the heat on so the house is warm. So I walk out of my room, the rest of the house is warm. Like stupid stuff like that. And I have pets and I have a kid and it just keeps the temperature even. And when I'm out... On a hot day, I can say, oh, well, just, just leave it at 80. When I'm on my way home, I drop it down to 72. So when I come on, it's cool. It works. It does how save long? you money. But so, but so how, how long did you have to have it before the cost savings yes. made up for the cost of the initial install? Because um, it's like 250 bucks. So if you're saving not, 34 cents a month. It, well, <laughs> no, I'm, say, I'm saying like 34% of my bill. My electric bill 
was uh, at its highest five hundred dollars a month. Whoa! And has dropped Whoa. down to two twenty five. Wow! Wow! My like electric bill never it's, that high. It's like a it's like a tw I have a twenty seven square foot twenty seven hundred square foot house. I accomplished the same it's, it's, thing. I turned off. The wine cellar cooler, the hot tub <laughs> heater, and I, I stopped heating the maid's quarters. And you wouldn't believe the savings you get. You know, I switched to a two-engine jet, Leo. That, <laughs> what? Every, get it, yeah, no, I know. It, 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 I can't go that's across insane. the Atlantic anymore, but I know, but what, what can you do? <laughs> You have to economize somewhere. Actually, I had a swamp cooler. I do have a closet, uh, supposedly a wine closet, and I had a swamp cooler in it. 500 bucks a month to run that thing. Wow. You well, know, at least he's going, water, too, what right? is our, this bill, because it was a new house, this bill is outrageous. She said, would you mind if we just turned off the swamp cooler? And I said, really? You think that's it? She said, yeah. She was right. 500 bucks a month. I don't like wine uh, that much. Now you have to drink. Now you, you have to see drink my little your wine. It's hot wine. It's hot colder. wine. I don't like oh. it. <laughs> Can you guys see my little fan to my left? Yeah. And it's got a little remote control. Yeah. That's, Is it Wi-Fi connected? Did it stop working this morning when Amazon Web Services were down? No, but if I flip the switch, it turns off. It just magic. 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 Absolutely. Look at that. See, you can see it stopping. Uncle what Larry's going to outlive us all. I Hopefully feel like I in, have, in a thousand years when in the, in the apocalypse, he will. When the historians write the history of the American Empire, they will say the beginning of the end was when we got too lazy to get up and change the channel on the TV, right. turn up the thermostat, turn down the thermostat, turn the fan off and on. See, that was you it. Say you say things. Anybody here have a Wi-Fi coffee maker besides me? What? No, no, I don't have a Wi-Fi coffee. Good idea, though. Yeah. They, I, I reviewed one once. I yeah. mean, they sent me one, and I, 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 it was like I used it twice, and then I, I couldn't understand why I needed to have Wi-Fi turning my coffee machine on and off. Leo, those are the things that passion. people use to dismiss the Internet of Things, though. They're always like, why do you need a talking refrigerator? But, I mean, I think, you know, in the case of Nest, it actually does make sense. It saves money. It's energy efficient. But, but it's always, no, like, the sort of dorky outliers, yeah. like the coffee maker on Wi-Fi. And well, that watering thing I was talking about, that is saving us real water. That is doing our little part for the drought. And it's worth, the, I don't know what it cost us, uh, $115 or something, because we actually are saving water. And our plants aren't dying. So that, that's another example of, of a... Of a well, and you, in, in, in California, you kind of need it, right? Right. Uncle Leo, just to, just to throw back response to your obvious mistake, um, ever since the television was invented, it came with a remote where people didn't have to get up. They were called children. I spent many years of servitude getting up when my dad said, turn to Channel 6. Oh, I sit back down. He's like, I'm thinking Channel 3 is better. And I'm thinking, really, Dad? And then I stand there and I got to turn it back. So don't tell me that the I'm world changed. I'm thinking I want to watch Channel 3. TV always came with a remote. The only time TV didn't come with a remote is when TV had one channel, okay? When it was Channel 3, there was no remote. Once and we had 3 and 4, those those were good days. Those were good and days. And are you lucky, Owen, that you didn't grow up at a time when your dad had 500 channels to choose from? Oh, if I have 500 channels to choose from, I'm leaving. I'm on <laughs> Just stay there, Owen. <laughs> channel hey, look, one? I, okay, I try in, channel I two. A, I was in one channel of the a, a ghetto household for a little while. We had pliers on the knob once we lost the knob. <laughs> and then we had to turn it with the pliers. And I was so upset because I'm not mechanically inclined. It was rough. I had to get the pliers lined up right now. Woo! It was a struggle. Did you have a... Uh, we had this... Uh, we use a coat hanger for an antenna. Did you do that? Rabbit ears. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Doesn't work, turns out. Nope. <laughs> uh, but I we actually were happy. still have rabbit ears because I'm a what? cord cutter. So, yeah. Yeah, wow. but see, you live in a metro where you probably have a dozen uh, over-the-air channels that are probably great. Yeah, I mean, half of them are, are in Spanish, but um, yeah, I can, get, I, can get the, I can get the basics. Yeah. I can watch the Emmys tonight, I think. Oh, the M. Okay, so there's an oh, example, the right? Tonight. Yeah, I, I, right. social media would have told you that if you just look at Twitter for five football seconds. Football tells me that. Yeah, your flip phone tells you that. No football. football. They've football. got a big sign in the back of the so, broadcast now, hinting the Emmys. <laughs> Watch the Emmys. If there were two more opposite, <laughs> there's no crossover there, but. <laughs> That's actually the perfect example of TV advertising and going after a broad right. audience. Right.
Well, I just don't like watching uh, General Hospital anymore because I'm not getting any of these feminine products that they keep throwing at me. But I love General Hospital. Well, don't, so. That's what I mean by that's ad tracking. Stuff. I think that sometimes you would actually like the benefits of ad. Uh, what if we well, call it ad <laughs> customization, not ad tracking? My ad tracking doesn't work anyway because I lie so much online. Like on my Facebook, he's sending me Viagra and 60s and older. Oh, come on. You're not lying. Like, that's not lying. <laughs> My Facebook, my Facebook thinks I'm 64. Oh, I'm lying. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Because you're my friend. Look, 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 look. Right? Okay. So I was out on a date, was talking to somebody, we were talking about Tinder. Oh, I bet you use Tinder. I've never used Tinder. I guarantee you use Tinder. I could prove to you that I've never used Tinder. How can you prove it? I say, open up my Tinder. She says, why are all these 67-year-old women on uh, I know, Tinder? I know. And I'm like, because Tinder thinks I'm 70. So you best believe I haven't been on Tinder recently. I get that on Facebook. Leo, 58-year-old women in Petaluma want to meet you. Exactly. Right. They're looking for you. Right. <laughs> I think Facebook stopped doing that. I hope they did. They, they did well, they did. You know why? Because it creeps people out. People thought that they were actually selling your name to the advertisers right. and not realizing that what Facebook does is they sell you to the advertisers. It's just automatic. Yeah, the, uh, you automatically get it because you meet whatever demographic that uh, they know where I you still, are. I, after. I, I get stone T-shirts thrown at me all the time. Like Stone, whatever, something, something's got my name on it with T-shirts. Oh, because your name is Stone? You get a yeah. T-shirt oh, brand? Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, they advertise me with, like, stuff with my name on it. Wow. Facebook I mean, that's, that's the problem with a lot of those ads, though, they is that don't you don't know where they're getting it from necessarily. Right. And, and if you don't understand why they're showing that to you, then you kind of start getting freaked out. And I think that's the difference right. between Google and Facebook is, like, Facebook... You know, like you just told them everything about you. Like you, you just gave it to them. Whereas Google has been kind of like sneakily taking it for years, and you're not always sure from where. If it's your searches, if it's your Gmail, wherever. And so I think that's why Facebook is able to get away with like really specific targeting, and Google is a little bit. It puts people off you know, a lot. I wish Google, Google, was smart, Google was smart enough to know <laughs> if I like look for a product. Like the other day, I was looking at uh, fold-up bicycles, or the other month. And it was smart so enough. You're going to be followed by ads that. for them for the rest of your life, basically. Yeah. The problem is, I already bought a fold up bicycle. Doesn't it know that? No. Can it say no. that you yeah. know, I'm, I'm on to something else now? That's the worst thing in the world. I'm like, look, don't. Yeah. I just bought one. Why are you telling me about something I already bought? I was that's, an Amazon that's why they're trying. They're trying so hard to close the loop with with physical retail stores and with you know e-commerce right. because they are people advertisers are wasting their money showing you those those ads because you've so, already purchased it, but they don't have a way to close the loop because unlike Facebook, you know, they, they don't have all, all the way down to the purchase funnel. So I'm gathering so from this conversation. Tracking isn't pervasive enough. We want them to actually not only <laughs> yeah, track do a good job, shop, but, but, you know, look at our credit card statements yeah. to know what we bought. Maybe Why follow not? us around as I ride my bicycle so they know where I rode. <laughs> what, you know, I ask this all the time, so but what would the harm do? be if they did that? What exactly is the harm? I don't like it. I think it's too invasive. Well, I understand uh, that you, philosophically, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. from a concrete point of view, what if they knew everything the, possible the, about the, you, the, what, is the, the, what problem, is the harm the problem there? Is, the problem is like, okay, so I, I drove a Bentley the other day. I put up a picture of it. It's not my Bentley, but if they think I got Bentley money and they start showing me caviar, we got a problem. I drove one. I don't own one. Hey, I looked at Alexis. I'm not buying Alexis. I went so to the problem. Waste, that's I just a waste of ad dollars, though. The that complaint, doesn't hurt anybody. The complaint people seem to have is that it, I hate ad tracking, and it and it does a terrible job. It's like, well, yeah. if it did a better job, you wouldn't hate it? You probably wouldn't notice it as much. Because right. if you're showing me things in anticipation of what I want, what do I care? Well, I want it. Here's the thing I find interesting, given this conversation. None of you are using ad blockers, apparently, right? I don't use ad blockers. I, have an, I, have an ad I, don't, I don't want them. I made a very no. fatal mistake, and I accidentally clicked on a game thing on Facebook. And oh boy! Oh, I can't stop it because I'm on a Mac. On a PC, I know how to like get rid of it, but I can't stop it. So I, I, right now, I block 76 ads because this thing is a monster, and it will not stop. Just pop up, pop yeah. up, pop ups. Well, they brought it on themselves. Like, We've got a live one. We're gonna pay yeah. anything we can oh, to get it. Man, they, well, they got gonna me good. Gonna crush some I, candy. And, and so everybody knows it was the Mario. Play Mar Super Mario Brothers on your computer. I was drunk. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, I want to play the original Super Mario. And I clicked it and it installed and it got me. It That's got half me. of Facebook's I, I don't, mobile business right I don't now mind legitimate ads. ads. First of all, I mean, somebody's got to pay for all this content. And, and you know, there's ads on my website as well. I, I, and and I don't have a problem with it. it it's it's the, the pop-ups and the ads that talk to you when you don't ask for it and the really, really annoying ads. And if there was a way to selectively, you know, just block stupid ads, I'd be there. But 
I don't particularly want to block all advertising. Somebody's got to pay for the internet. I agree. You know, so if it's legit, it's, it's, kind, of it's a, fine. kind of a tough one. I agree. If it's legit, it's fine. Be legit. I thought of one more thing that I like about Android over uh, iOS. Uh, Apple has put on Android a move to iOS app. Yeah. So you can download yeah. it from the Google Play Store, and that uh, will help you make the move from an Android phone to iOS, which I'm going to try doing on uh, Friday. Of course, the irony of that is it's against Apple's uh, App Store rules to mention another operating system in an application on really on on the iPhone so oh, if if Google or some Android manufacturer were to make a move to Android app Apple would refuse it amazing so Don't what I like about Android okay is it's open that. this is why you're yeah. sending me that that uh, that I'm so you're not even gonna care about this phone you're gonna get this phone you're gonna think it's cool for a month and then you're sending it to well me. that's just my problem that's just because I'm a phone. fickle fickle person who, no, you you're not fickle. You, you found carriers? what works for you, and that's it. That's not fickle. Yeah. That's going No, you know what? You. Okay, I'll tell you what's bad about Android. Not one Android phone manufacturer can figure out how to get more than about 10 hours battery life. And how much I, do the iPhone get? Well, the 6 Plus is going to go through, I think. Well, we'll see, but uh, my expectation is it'll go through the day easily. When you don't Love use it with stuff, I got the watch. My, ever since I got this watch, my battery's been not very good. So it all depends on how you use it. The use is... Right. All right. Fair. Well, Some I, people last all day. Me and you. Do you have a six plus day. or do you have the littler one? I have the littler one. No, the littler one does not go through the day. It's the six plus is the big the big battery. I, I ordered the six S this time. I last one with a plus, and I decided I wanted to try the smaller one again. Okay. Just to just to, just to have it. Yeah. So. Well, we'll see. we'll see. I get mine on Friday. Too. I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited. How much did you get the 64 gigabytes? Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. This is another thing. It's a hard one. You could buy a Moto X, nicely uh, customized. I got the ebony wood. It's pretty gold. 450 bucks for right. a 60, uh, 64 gig version. Uh, a 128 gig iPhone S Plus in rose gold, over $1,000. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's, and that's what you bought? Well, I feel like if I'm going to drive that Bentley, I ought to have a phone that works just right with it. See, you get so, the, so you signed up you, for the, look, the financing plans, right? No, no, no. I actually no, paid a thousand a, bucks. So again, do you I'm have the gold phone, Apple Watch for fourteen thousand too? No, I don't have the gold Apple Watch. I, I, I have the uh, the stainless steel, but I haven't used that it because I think it's plan, dopey. Bentley. But now, now, I'll tell you another reason. My hearing aids which I'm not wearing right now, but when I wear hearing aids, because I'm an old man, uh, uh -huh. they do work. They have an app that works with the uh, Android device, but it uses Bluetooth LE, and it's unreliable, and, it's, and, it, and it doesn't stream audio from the phone and stuff. The iPhone, Apple made a driver for those hearing aids, and the Apple iPhone app does a lot more. It's much more flexible. It does things like when you walk into a restaurant, you say, well, let me adjust it and then save that, and next time you're at that place, it will do those settings automatically, things like cool. that. Uh, Uncle Leo, just thank you in advance for the phone. But let me just tell you one thing. 60, <laughs> 64 gig and 128 gig, there's no difference in the phone. The 128 doesn't make it any faster, I know. better, cooler, thinner. No, I tell I you, appreciate you buying the top thought, line for me. I thought My about this too. Coming up, Christmas thought, is coming up. I appreciate you. I don't need, I probably 64 would, would probably be enough. But I'm thinking this is the computer I use every day, all day, day in, day out, much more than any other computer I use. It should be a beast. Yeah, I have a 128 gig. I'm just saying that you didn't need it for the purpose that you said. That's all. No, I don't need it. I probably won't fill it up. But no, I just... 16 is kind of a joke. 16, I mean, 16 is horrible. Is That's what Apple's small. evil. They yeah. know better. Oh, don't yeah. even, I want to talk about it. I'm just... Never mind. You should about to say something yeah, else. It's bait and switch. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. It makes you so angry. It's one of the stupidest things. You know you can't put anything on a 16 gig phone. Yeah. Nothing. But your whole thing is to sell people apps. You're... Oh, they so... Woo. No, why they do it is so they can say the iPhone starts at, at $650. Right. They can in fact, still say they don't even really say place. that. They say the iPhone 6S starts at uh, $200, as if oh, that's right. a price anybody's actually going to pay for it. Well, not and anymore. Right. Well, I guess at and p still has a, has a, a few people right? still doing it. it, yeah. I heard, um, I heard uh, uh, there was an app developer that did a study of memory. I wish I could find this story. Um and what they found was of that by far more most of their users had 16 gig iPhones because people are price sensitive. They don't they don't. And if Apple sells it, it must be okay, right? Even though we all know it's not enough. 
Of those people, the vast majority had less than a gigabyte free. Of the 64 gig iPhone users, none of them had come even close to tapping it out. It's, in other words, 64 is this, I think, is the sweet spot. That's plenty. For some of us, yeah. 32 is probably plenty. But for some reason, Apple just, well, not for some reason. We know why. So they can say starting at two hundred dollars. But you know the funny would thing would is, would it, it cost, the cost them that much that more RAM? to add another like, nothing? Twenty practically gigs nothing. Or That's an interesting question, yeah. right? Couldn't That's they cool. charge six fifty for the thirty-two gig? Make a, they, they don't could. even make a thirty-two gig. Right. They could. I mean, the, the cost of the cost of that of that RAM is is not very much from a manufacturing standpoint. That's just purely a way to make money and, and to get people like us to spend more for our iPhones. Well. And, of course, you look at this. This is price psychology. This is uh, uh, economics 101. You look at the starting price. You know what that starting price is, $650 or $200 if you subsidized. 16 gigs. Oh, for 100 bucks more, I could not only go, I could quadruple it to 64 gigs. Oh, well, absolutely. So everybody's going to buy the 64 gig. Not, but right. they don't though. They don't. I know which is so sad. many people that get the sixty, and then they can't upgrade because they don't right. know about the phones to do that. There's so many commonplace people that don't, and they get screwed. <laughs> and you it's know, stupid. You know how Apple's solving that? The, first of all, the new iOS nine is only a, I think, a one point three gigs, but also it will actually delete stuff. It will secretly behind the scenes as it's installing. If it doesn't have enough room, it will delete stuff, delete apps and stuff, install, and then re-download the apps to make room. It, the only way it would make sense is if they were trying to use it as a justification to push people to their cloud service. But they don't even really do that very well. So I can't even use that as an yeah. excuse for that size phone. Yeah. Is I, that even a big business for them, the people upgrading and paying more for cloud storage? I, I feel like I haven't gotten a very aggressive push from them on that. And I'm a, one of those people who has a full phone. You should. Yeah, you should buy more iCloud. They are I, dropping the price September 25th. I bet yeah. you they will make a big stink about this. I would guess that they're going to start promoting it heavily because they are dropping the price when the new iPhone comes out. Yeah, I get emails about it, but whatever. I, I'm actually a Pank member. Maybe that's why they're trying to upgrade me or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a break. Come back with more. Owen J.J. Stone is here. <laughs> oh, doctor. At oh, doctor on the Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Aaron keeps laughing at my rage. It's real, Aaron. It's real. I know. No, I'm not laughing. I'm I'm really entertained. But uh, he I is also, entertaining. I it's also okay. am, I feel like your passion is you know uh, is uh, infectious. <laughs> I love you guys. I just want you to come back every week. Larry Magan, CBS. So nice to have you all. Really appreciate it. Uh, of course, Aaron Griffith. Her first time. Would you know that? Would you believe that? Never. Yep. Nope. She's fitting now right in. She now belongs. Now it's a professional mic stand. No. <laughs> oh, that mic man. stand makes it, baby. I'm getting one made for me next week. Side yeah, note. I'm so, so you know, hey, could you sell those? I'm going to start selling these. Yeah. It's hey. an artisanal mic stand made in Brooklyn. I need I need my special edition MacGyver <laughs> duct tape. You'll find uh, us at the Brooklyn Flea. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I, I actually, there's a, a service... Uh, you know, it makes a, like a food basket service we subscribe to called mouse.com. And like, it's all this stuff from Brooklyn, basically. Well, it, yeah. It, it does go to show that nerds will buy anything because as soon as we saw her <laughs> mic stand, all three of us were like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> She's right. trying to hide it. We're all like, no, put no, it No, bring it out, screen. bring it out. We need yeah. one of the yeah. asking questions. How is it made? When is it made? Ooh. Is it vintage? Where did you get yeah. it? <laughs> We're going to ride this podcasting wave all the way to the end. Oh, <laughs> down to the bitter, right. bitter end. The dregs. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Stamps.com. I love Stamps.com. We use it here at the office. It's it's a way to make your mailing more professional. Every time I get a package, for a lot, this happens a lot with Etsy. Uh, not, I guess not a surprise, but I, we get these packages. Speaking of artisanal. Yeah, from Etsy. In Brooklyn. And it's got stamps on it, and it's got like all this scotch tape wrapped around it, and they're odd shapes. And I'm thinking, this is, uh, maybe, you know, it's Etsy, so maybe they're not trying to exude a professional look. But I got to tell you, your life would be so much better if you just go to stamps.com. They will print beautiful mailing labels. They'll send out emails to your recipient saying, you know, if it's, if it's you know, it's confirmation email or express, and it will tell them it's on its way with this tracking number. It does this all automatically, even fills in the address 
information from the website. In fact, if you're, if you're sending overseas, it'll fill out international customs forms automatically, certified mail return receipts, all done automatically. Even get discounted package insurance with one click. And the best part about stamps.com, you don't have to go to the post office. You can do it all from your desk. You don't need a postage meter. You can use your printer. They'll even, and I'll tell you how, to get this, they'll send you a, by the way, that is an old iPhone on there. Wow, they got to update that graphic. That that's like, not an iPhone, is it? Oh, it is an iPhone. It's an Android yeah, device. Yeah, that's, that's an old Android phone. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get you a new Either uh, way. We'll get you one of them Note 5s, uh, stamps.com. Uh, uh, but look at that scale. Now, that is state-of-the-art USB scale. Very cool. We're going to get you that scale. I'll tell you how you can get it in a little bit. Uh, and then you always have the right postage. That's another thing people do. They put an extra stamp on there. or like They don't want it to be uh, postage due. That, and I've had that happen. I've had PR people send me stuff postage due. It's like, dude, you're trying to promote your product and you're making me pay to look at it? No, I don't think so. It is such a great service. If they would only use stamps.com. No meter, no special inks. You don't have to go to the post office. In fact, there's a big button on stamps.com when you're all ready to go and you press the button the mail carrier comes to you picks it up takes it to the post office uh there are no limits by the way uh if you are um going to a post a mailbox with a package that's 16 pounds 16 ounces or more they'll they'll send it back to you you have to bring it to the post office not with stamps.com because of the way it works they know who you are it's they will take any size package it's just i mean i gotta tell you i can say so many great things about stamps.com find out for yourself Four weeks free. All you got to do is go to stamps.com. Click the microphone, though. Don't take that a, a, a deal on the front page. Click the microphone and enter twit. And that uh, $5 offer, whatever that was on the front page, is a hundred, now turns into a $110 bonus offer. You get $55 in postage coupons you can use over your first few months at stamps.com. You get that scale. That's worth 50 bucks. They do uh, uh, charge you 5 bucks shipping and handling on the scale, but you also get a $5 supply kit, so that makes up for that, plus four weeks of stamps.com. So this is a really good deal, $110 uh, offer at stamps.com. Just click the uh, microphone in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, use the offer code twitstamps.com. They've been the sponsor how long? I think for five or six years. They've been when postage was uh, twenty nine cents, I think for a that's how long. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know, I print. I, I shouldn't admit yeah. this, but I come to work if I need stamps at home. I don't go to the post office. I come here. I said, Debbie, print out some stamps for me, and she prints the forever mm. stamps. So I just I can use those forever. That's we can print the forever stamp. Cool. Yes, I didn't know that. Right? Oh. Isn't that cool? They don't do. Do they do the ones that you get your picture at my like when my dad yes. got married? Yes. Stamps, so they had, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they probably Forced. That was the problem. Oh. They don't have a special stamp for I, that, do they? I have some Leo stamps, but they're they're yeah. so old. It's like twenty two cent stamps. I can't really use them <laughs> for anything. Plus, my hair is not gray. But hey, you know, it's uh, memories, memories. Uh, let's see. Moving, uh, moving right along. Actually, we're done. There's nothing more. No, I should find something else to talk about. Apple's going back to court with Samsung. They want Samsung to stop selling phones they stopped selling years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they want a ruling that will force Samsung to el eliminate the really the stupidest patent I've ever heard, the slide to unlock patent. Um, now, this might be useful for future phones, um, although a patent lawyer uh, quoted in Bloomberg Business says, the remaining litigation looks rather symbolic, and I don't expect the court rulings on older models would have much impact. What's Who's talking? There's some... some Noise that coming out of audio on the Gosh, page. Darn I think. it, Bloomberg, it, you know better. That was an ad running. You missed yep. it. You didn't get to block it. Yeah. Well, no, was it? No, I'm no, it's actually the uh, the story, but video. shouldn't have autoplay video. On that's just as bad as an ad. I don't. I, if I, I want to hear a story, I'll click on this story. I right. don't need to have it talk at me. When we first our new website went up a couple of months ago, and we and we first we had it autoplay because it was a big play button that took you to that page. But even with yep. that, people said no. And I said, of course not. I'm hey, sorry. We turned it hey, off. Hey, Leo, can I bring up a new topic? Yes. Yeah, bring up, if you don't mind, bring up larrysworld.com. Not to plug my site, but click on that lead story about local libraries offering digital content. Um, I, I was blown away. There's a, I got pitched this week by a, a company called Hoopla. And what they are is basically a free version of Netflix. And there's my phone ringing. Um, that you get, your library pays for it, right? 
And there's, there's a ton of that kind of, that's my Mercury News column, there's a ton of that kind of content. I was just blown away. So I went to my library and I checked out all of the things that I can get for free. I, I happen to live in Palo Alto, but these things, you know, every, every library has something. And it is amazing, not just encyclopedias, but what, um, newspaper databases going back to 1851. Oh, nice. Uh, Indie flicks, independent movies. <laughs> but, okay. uh, I can download audio to my phone. It, I feel like I'm doing an ad right now. This but, is cool, but, but I, do you have to you know, ch do you, you check it out and then you have to bring it back in two weeks? You don't have to physically return it. It does go away. So with the hoopla. It, this drives me freaking movies, nuts. Go, I understand well, it's a copyright thing or something. The library yeah. is allowed to have this stuff for free. Uh, I mean, by the way, good movies that you'd pay for uh, to right. watch. But, Some of them are but it's so weird that they're trying to adapt the digital world to this old world of books that you check out and the librarian stamps it on the card and you have yeah. to bring it back or you have a fee. Obviously, digital copies. A, no, but it's more about access. Like, you can only access it yeah. for a certain amount of time. That's, like, the, the just, limited aspect of it. It's not, like, that they can't physically give it to you. Of course, digital copies are, copies are limitless, but, like, it's the idea of giving you access. It's the same way that... I guess. Yeah. When you subscribe to Netflix, Wait. when you stop yeah. subscribing, you don't have access yep. to those streaming so, things anymore. Yeah. Right. The way it works with Hoopla is actually kind of interesting. The way it works is your library pays a fee every time you watch a movie. Oh. And so my library limits me to 10 movies a month, which uh -huh. is their way of making sure that they don't go broke. Others actually, some of these things actually have services where they have a limited number of copies. So if they have two audiobooks, right. let's say, and three people want them, you wait in line. But but there are, you know, there are different models. Uh, I actually like the Hoopla model better. But sure, it's, you don't want to you don't want to compete with the Amazons and the Audibles and Why all not? the ways you can buy content. Pardon me? Why not? Because, well, what are you, a socialist? Here? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, no, I mean, look, I, 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 don't, love think, it. I don't think a library is going to put Amazon or Netflix out of business. Well, it's not the library. There's still there there is still content that is being monetized by someone. The library is paying for this content in the same way they pay for physical books, and they have a limited amount of money. I mean, I'm sure if the library could afford it, they'd love to give me all the. No, but I want really, what's it. going on is the content. The rights holders are saying exactly. you, you can't exactly. do this unless you you know have these restrictions on it. But it's I don't. All about well, all right, that's fine. Again, a lot of people that are using libraries are people who don't have access exactly. to Netflix. Exactly. That's so why it people, should be free. It, well, it, well, it is free for the people to free. get it. Well, it should be free for the library, too, if you ask me. It, no, it, well, well, okay. That's not how libraries work. We're not going to discuss that. Oh, I guess but, you have to but, buy the book, don't you, before you can rent it out. Okay, so libraries do pay for the yeah. books, don't they? Yeah, yeah. all right. So oh, it's like that. Physical goods. It's like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, I so. found out that libraries pay more for digital goods than consumers do. I was surprised about this. My librarian was telling me that when they buy an ebook, they pay a higher premium, a higher amount than if you and I were to buy an ebook, on the theory that they can now loan it out to multiple right. people. Yeah, so commercial. They have big, you know. You're I just to love my life. libraries. We did a great piece la yesterday. Oh man, uh, on the Library Freedom uh, Project. This was on the new screensavers. Um, they're doing some really interesting things, and one of them is they're putting. Uh, tour exit nodes in public libraries all over the country. The idea being, uh, what better place to put a tour exit node than in a library? Uh, because at least you know the library is not spying on you. Um, and then they also have the uh, the uh, they're doing a digital library uh, literacy play. Oh, they're doing some really great stuff. Wow. This great is a li yeah another one you could write an article about. Li as li you could become the library guy for the Mercury News. I could. I could write a library called LibraryFreedomProject.org. And they're encouraging uh, libraries to set up GNU Linux as their uh, terminals and, and all of this and put in Tor Exit Relay. This is really interesting, uh, uh, folks. I really uh, kind of like them. Um, good. Well, good. Hoopla. Hey, Leo, I, didn't, I didn't mean to apply that you would be bad if you were a socialist. I mean, it, it, it would be okay. Oh, I mean, no, it's okay. I know in America there are no socialists. It's not allowed. Well, I, understand. I would dislike that well, post if I could. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. You can't soon. You no, can't soon. it's not a dislike button. Yeah, I know that. I know. It's, it's an empathy button. An empathy button. Thank empathy you, button. Aaron. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a troll button is what it is. No, because no, the problem it's like, is. It's going to be like Slack. Aaron's it's going to be like. Aaron's absolutely right. It's going to be like Slack. It's going to be like, you know, you can react with a little emoji. There's probably going to be lots of Aww. different kinds. Can you if, don't... If somebody's aw. dog died, 
want to like it. You right. want to acknowledge, I hear you, I feel that you. That happened to me recently. And I think that, yeah. they, that they probably think that because people don't feel awkward sharing, you know, uncomfortable or bad news on Facebook because they don't want people to like it, you right. know, they don't want to think about how many likes right. is this going to get. I think that it, it's preventing people from sharing some of the more, you know, difficult or intimate things. And Facebook wants to stop anything that could ever hinder sharing. So, I mean, ultimately it's all about more engagement or whatever, but it's an, just another mode of communication, a passive communication. What is it going to look like? Is it going to be like... <laughs> what? A, shru a shruggy? Uh, mm. uh, sadly, sadly sometimes I think people are... Time. Yeah, it's been it's been a long term project, and but they have it. I think what's stopping them is what's the hell's the icon going to look like? They're well, trying to figure I, it out how to. Right. You know. I mean, how hard could it be to implement? They own the platform. All they have to do is turn it on. They, they can choose Facebook from any of the hundreds of emojis. You know, there's right. like the the praying, the hands up, the, the hands up hand, emoji is a the, good. The handshake. You know. Any what does that hands up emoji really mean, though? Uh, I don't know. I, I, there's a, the official term for it is like, or I, I actually, sorry, I, I can't even remember. There was, there's been lots of articles exploring what those hands up mean, and I think it's supposed to be. Is like, it Japanese? It's celebration. It's, yeah. it's celebration. It's excitement. But I, I just think some. Sometimes I give people more credit than that. A friend of mine fell, broke her face open. She had a picture in the hospital, and her face. She looked bad. There weren't any likes, but she had like. 130 comments, people saying, mm -hmm. wish you well, all that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like how is it going to still promote something when it's diluted? So if, like, 30 people want to go and say it's funny or 30 people want to be angry at it and say, oh, this is, you know, I'm, I'm against Donald Trump. Like, how is it going to get that congruency of either it's got a lot of comments or it's got a lot of likes? Like, is in it the, well In the new one, I think the ideal would be that people wouldn't be commenting because they're commenting because they want to acknowledge it, but they don't want to like it. And the yeah. new one, the idea would be, or the new, this new uh, sort of iteration, the idea would be there wouldn't be so many comments, but there would be, you know, reactions that were like, you know, condolences, feel better, uh, we're sorry, or, yeah. you know, a variety of reactions like that. Another you know, you see it, you see it, if you use Slack, they're, they're doing this now where you can react with like lots of different emojis, I, I, but it does, like it does fragment it. I like comments a lot more than I like likes. I, I mean, frankly, I like things. I'm feeling lazy, and if I really care, I'll, I'll, I'll comment. And which is mostly I mean, I mostly what I do on yeah. Facebook. I'm not gonna type anything. And I'm just gonna go, hey, thumbs I, up. I, I, <laughs> yeah, but I like it when people take a moment to actually like something. But express I don't have time themselves. for that. I'm busy. Well, we don't express yeah. ourselves anymore. Hey, how you doing today? Don't I got another cat questions. video to look at. I don't. I don't yeah, have time no, to type a it's comment. It's the equivalent of a grunt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what we need. Actually, I was thinking we should have a nah and ah uh, and but to see emoji. Well, okay. By the way, I've learned something today. Emojipedia. Emojipedia.org is a wiki all about emojis. This is called the hallelujah emoji, also known as yeah. the magic emoji, praise hands emoji, festivus miracle emoji, or two hands emoji. And uh, actually, you know, depending on who's doing your emoji illustration, with Apple, it's just two hands and a bunch of confetti. Is that is that the Google one, the weird necklace one? The Google one is the one, uh, Apple's the, the top one, one yeah. with the necklace. The Google one is the... No, no, that's like a person with no neck. The no, neckless, one. not necklace. Yeah. I got John's it. John's neck. Yeah, no, the no neck guy is a, is Android. Uh, Microsoft has a gray ghost, which is really weird. Uh, un Uncle Leo, to make you happy, I'm going to tuck my mic off and start doing the rest of the show like this. <laughs> so right. you don't that's, hear me talk. You is that empathy? Is that... No, what is that? No. I can't explain that's myself because I can't make comments anymore. I have to make uh, gestures. So I don't know and I don't care. Good. I'm going to stop talking, and then we're just going to do this the whole time. And that's how we're going to talk to each other. I, had, I hadn't seen this emoji, this hands-up emoji, until I started using Telegram. And then it was one that's very common in the... Te Telegram gives you stickers that reflect emojis. So you can add an extra something-something by having a sticker with that's like hands-up. I but make it, mine but brown it could be Hitler doing it. it or something, which I, makes... I make mine brown and just do it as a hands-up, don't shoot... Yeah, well, that's what it was. <laughs> you know, depending... Look, uh, Facebook's really does look like a don't shoot. Yeah. Uh, em emoji 1, I don't know what Emoji 1 is, but I really don't know what's going on there. It looks like uh, drops of liquid or something going on there. Yeah, that's um, weird. That's yeah, weird.
But the weirdest one is definitely Microsoft Windows 10. <laughs> what the hell is that? The guy going down a roller coaster. Is that the Blue Man Crew? Oh, that's what this is. Well, see, that's the thing. It's depending on how you illustrate it. It could really be different things, can it? I think of it as an amen. Like when people say, oh, man, we're going to be that. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. That's what I feel like that is on everything. Well, that, it bad. is known as the hallelujah emoji. So okay, well there you go. If you're ever if you're ever confused though, you you can make the uh, you can make the iPhone speak the emojis. Oh. Uh, if you turn it on to like hearing impaired mode, right. And then you send that, or you you just like highlight it and say, you know, you can make it actually speak it. So it will the iPhone will tell you what the names are. For example, the very popular uh, poop emoji. The official name according to Apple is. Smiling pile of poo. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear that in Siri's voice. Yeah, or, it's or it's the the British, there's the a British voice written. that's the best. Really? The, you like the male voice? Yeah. A smiling I like, pile I like the of British, poo. I like the British voice, yes. Yeah, it's male, though, isn't it? The British voice? Uh, I think there might have... Is there a female? there is a female. Maybe not. I, I haven't done it for a while, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I know what I want to do real quickly. If you missed anything this week, there's, we, had a, we had a fun week on Twitter, and we have put together, I don't know, just a little video, a little home video to show you what you might have missed. Take a look. Previously on Twitter. <laughs> it's Talk Like a Pirate Day. Arr. Uh, this is going to get annoying fast, isn't it? This Week in Law. Joining us today is entertainment lawyer Jeff Cohen, who you might also know as Chunk from the Goonies. Well, thank you for having me. And yes, the weight of being a cultural icon is heavy. Have you found that your experiences, has that shaded uh, how you approach dealing with your own clients? Absolutely. You realize how challenging it is for, for your clients. I mean, you have to be so vulnerable before you buy. It seems like every year we've got a new Moto X and it's time for the latest, the Moto X Pure. If you want a pure Android experience, one of the best Android experiences, uh, the Moto X is a great choice. Tech News Today. Well, you may have heard that the TSA's strongly recommended luggage locks have been hacked and that the lock's master keys have been posted online and can be 3D printed. TSA essentially said these locks aren't really a part of our security scheme. They're more for traveler's peace of mind than anything. Twit, now also available in several colors of unapologetic plastic. And we got a big week coming up. Besides the iPhone coming in on uh, Friday, Mike Elgin has the latest. Coming up this week, TechCrunch Disrupt kicks off tomorrow, which is Monday, September 21st in San Francisco. Microsoft Office 2016 ships Tuesday, September 22nd. Facebook's Oculus Connect event happens on Wednesday, September 23rd in Hollywood. And BlackBerry reports earnings on Friday, September 25th. For all this and the rest of the news this week, tune in to Tech News Today at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1700 UTC at twit.tv slash live. Back to you, Leo. Mike Elgin, our uh, news director. We'll be covering uh, at least some of those events. I know we got a camera crew down for TechCrunch Disrupt. I uh, hear there's a big announcement coming from Pebble. They've got that on their uh, website, so we'll find out what that's going to be tomorrow. The Oculus Rift thing starts on Wednesday, but I believe uh, Thursday is the keynotes. And, of course, we're very interested in what's going on with Oculus, the VR company owned by Facebook, so we will uh, also broadcast that live. I think that starts... I think it starts at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1700 UTC. Uh, all ahead this week on Twit. Our show today brought to you by the friends at GoToMeeting by Citrix. Citrix GoToMeeting is so awesome. Uh, it is so much better than getting in an airplane and going to a meeting. I really should have used it for my IAB event, but then I wouldn't have said hi to Erin Griffin, and she wouldn't be on the show today, so I'm glad I went. But most of the time, even your clients kind of prefer having an online meeting. It saves them the hassle of taking you to lunch, saves you some time, some money flying out there. It's a great way for a team to work together online. With GoToMeeting, you can meet from anything, pretty much, a computer, a tablet, a smartphone. Uh, your team could join just by clicking a link. It's really fast and easy, even if they don't have the software. It downloads in seconds, and they're on. Plus, most devices... With an HD camera, you can you can actually use it so you see each other. So you can, it's like being in the room. You can share screens, you can see each other, you can get feedback in real time. Citrix Go to Meeting really is awesome. I don't want to have a meeting. I don't like having meetings without Go to Meeting. Most of our meetings are Go to Meetings, and that's why that's the way to do it. Go to meeting.com. 
You can try it free for 30 days. All you have to do is visit the site, go to meeting.com and click the try it free button. I urge you to give it a shot. Give it a try. I think it will revolutionize the way you work with clients and colleagues. It's so easy to use. Go to meeting.com. Click the try it free button and 30 days await. I guess the, uh, I'm looking at the Pebble, get Pebble website. And they say two days. So I guess it won't be tomorrow at TechCrunch Disrupt. But on Tuesday, something is going to happen from the Pebble folks. We have some Pebble fans here. They've got to be struggling a little bit, though, don't you think, from uh, uh, yeah. the Apple Watch and the Android Watch? What's, who? Did you turn off the lights? They just went out? You know... Yeah, you know Go what ahead. their biggest competitor is, Leo? You want, let me just show you their, their biggest competitor. <laughs> yeah. right is it called Casio? Right Nothing. <laughs> it's called no watch. It's, called, it's called, called the the blank wrist. I mean, I have a drawer full of these watches, and and I I, I think I think I've got the latest Pebble. They sent it. I sh I should send it back. The steel. By now, no, the time I think is the latest. Yeah. The time. It, you know, it, it's okay. But but the bottom line is, you know, we've talked about this before. You can do almost anything you can do on a watch with your phone, and I usually forget to wear mine. I, I yeah. sometimes when I when I go out and exercise, I'll sometimes put on. I've got a little exercise watch I bought for seventy nine dollars, and I put that on when I go bike riding occasionally. We uh, are going to have a Google event on the not next week, but the week after the September 29th. We expect yep. they will announce the new Nexi. Did you get your invitation, Larry? You going? I did. Yeah, I'm yeah. going at Nexus. I guess the Nexus Seven. I assume. Be a new, uh, new well, no, I don't think they're going to do it that way because it's still going to be a five inch. There'll be a five inch from LG, oh, right. and a six oh, inch see. from Huawei. What did I see? The name was weird. It was like the Google XV or something. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember exactly, but it's like five P and six yeah. or, or six P. Yeah. To distinguish it from yeah. a Nexus right. five, but it's not. It's still I, five I, inches. Well, it's funny because the I didn't mean seven as in seven inches. I meant in the follow up. The seventh. The next, right. Yeah. Right. Right. But, but that's where we get all confused now. Uh, so I what I like about it, it's funny, you were talking about uh, earlier about the Moto X. I like the fact that Google phones have pure Android yes. and they don't have all this crap put on top of them. And and that alone is why I'm... Increasingly, well I'm of the opinion, though, that your smartphone should have a fingerprint reader. I got the Moto yeah. X and I loved it, but you know what? I really miss the fingerprint reader. Apparently, these new Nexuses will. The, it'll be on the back, I think, uh, at least according to the renders, the rumors we've heard. But that's, that's you got to, I like pure Android. I like a fingerprint reader. Google this week replaced Google Wallet with Android Pay. It was very confusing if you had Wallet on your phone. <laughs> Suddenly it was now not there. And yet it was because you got Android Pay kind of magically. Uh, but it seems the same. I don't know. I really don't understand why they've split the two wallets. Well, the version pay. that I got only let me pay individuals. I couldn't use it at a store. I know it's coming. That's right? Wallet. Walgreens. So That's wallet, wallet you will continue to use yeah. to manage your credit card, your, if you have a Google Wallet credit card, and to uh, pay people. Android Pay right. is your touch-to-pay solution. And actually, it looks a lot like Apple Pay now. You, you put in credit cards. The credit, you can choose which one's the active credit card, your default credit card. Uh, I don't think I'm revealing too much by showing the last four digits, but that's uh, maybe, we can, I don't know. It won't be the first time I've given out credit card numbers <laughs> on the air. So, but that's weird. I don't understand why you separate those functions out. If you have a Google credit card, you use wallet. Right. If you want to send people money, you use wallet. If you want to tap to pay, you use Android pay. I guess that's, yeah. I guess that's. Uh, it, yeah, I just, everybody yeah. wants more real estate. That's all I can figure. You want more apps. There Ooh, will be apparently. Well, I just got a note. What? I, I now have to, now all I have to do is add, I don't know if you can see that, but I, I just got an update to Android Pay, just came, and now I have to oh. add my credit card. Yeah, you'll see. And then it was, the that's what it's going to, so you just got it. Yeah. Uh, so we went out this week. This afternoon. It works pretty well. It's so hard, it's so hard to take a credit card out of my pocket. I mean, I, this is going to save me <laughs> seconds a year. Uh, seconds. <laughs> you know, what it you is. What do with all those seconds? It is ironic no. because you still have to uh, go through all the rigmarole that you had to go through if you swiped right. a credit card. The only thing you replace is swiping the credit card. In fact, I, I, I used I, Android Pay the other day, and I had to sign a receipt. <laughs> sign oh, a credit geez. card receipt. You had to sign a receipt. Oh, Maybe. Lord. I know, Lord, I tell you. <laughs> I still use straight cash, homie. I know, because you're such a privacy advocate. Hey, hey, they ain't catching me. <laughs> they ain't catching me. Are you shrinking, here. Owen? I think you're shrinking. I'm, Could I'm you tilt here, your... I'm making my time uh, beat. <laughs> 
I didn't want anybody to call the cops on me. I'm busy. New watch. He's got a new watch. It's thinner, lighter, faster. I didn't want anybody to know what I was doing. So I sunk down in the seat. My fault. You can wear that. could be your church hat. You can wear that to church. Just put a little thing on it. attention. Yeah, just. I'm calling yeah, Homeland so I'm, Security. That I'm, looks pretty dangerous. I'm selling to me. it for three thousand on eBay right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm loading it up. Beats so we time. Get that money. That's right. Time by beats. I'm Owen Flavor Flav. True story. Uh, chain uh, I'm excited about the new Chromecast that Google may show or is rumored to be showing on the 29th. I think Chromecast really is. You know, Apple's got its Apple TV, and then of course immediately after Apple TV came out or was announced. Without 4K, Amazon said, but we've got the new Fire TV with 4K. With 4K. Hey, we, we made a gaming system with no game remote. <laughs> Yay, Apple. Like, for Pete's sake, like, come, just do the little things, bro. <laughs> like, the little things. Like, you go, like, people play so many games on their on your phone and your tablets. If you just said, hey, you know what? I'm going to sell you this for $80 also so you can enjoy your experience. People would be happy. No, they do, don't they do have that. a controller? They don't have a controller? N no, they've got their stupid wand that turns sideways and turns into a controller. Oh, you mean like a Wiimote? Y yes, it's like that. It is crappier. a Wiimote. But it's crappier because it doesn't even have clickable, joystickable things to it. But in two years, when people tell them how stupid they are, they'll make one, and then they'll sell for $1,000. Yeah, and we'll and all be innovative. happy. Yeah, how innovative we, they are. We we've decided four that years no later. one should have to play games with a simple little bar of candy. Steve Jobs is turning in his grave because he got a pencil. <laughs> he said, "Who wants a stylus? Nobody." Yeah, I like Nobody. the pencil. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy the pencil. Why? Uh, okay, first of all, you like the pencil. I have that thing for my Wacom tablet. It doesn't have a battery in it. Oh, it oh, yes, yes, See? yes. Wacom tablet styluses have batteries. My Wacom tablet styluses. Oh, have you must have like that bamboo or something. No, I've got a thousand dollar tablet, bro. Come on. It doesn't have a battery like in it. It has a battery. You just haven't, you haven't replaced it yet. How do I? It's got little watch batteries in it. Let me, See? Let me, find, let me find this battery. See? It's you. in there. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. This, I don't... It's not in here. I oh, okay. It. No battery. I must be some other has, pen. This has press, pressure sensitive, all that stuff. I know. Blah, it does all blah, that blah, stuff. Blah. Actually, Stop. the chat room is saying, no, no, they don't have batteries. Well, I know I've put batteries in some styles. Well, it's just because you got that old wax stuff you're trying to put on me, <laughs> not me. I got, I got money, Uncle Leo. And this doesn't need a battery. And it does... Pressure and when you tilt it, it actually feels and moves. Like, come on, bro. And you gotta have me plug it in. You got something else for me to plug in when half your adapters break after 13 days anyway. And I gotta spend forty dollars to fix it. It's stupid. And charging me a hundred dollars for a pencil. Are you you're an artist, right? You if you have that tablet, you must draw, right? Yes, I do. I'm very good. I actually. think you I know you would be. I <laughs> why is everybody laughing? Everybody that laughs, mail me five dollars. Get my address from Uncle Leo and send me money. Don't you laugh at me and my art. I am a skilled individual. I I would like to send you an iPad Pro and a pencil and see if you like it. Good. I won't send it back. Just so you know, just send it with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't like it, you could use it as a cocktail tray. I, I, I understand the premise of certain things. I just... I hate how Apple sells things to people, and when people push that stuff right back down your throat, like no one else does it. Like, bro, you could have made your pencil without a battery. You could have did it. And why did you do that? Because it's something else that'll break that you could charge a premium price for. It's unnecessary. Whatever. But send it to me. I'll play with it because I'm not buying one. I can't justify it. Second generation Chromecast, better Wi-Fi, faster playing, and it's going to look like a puck. It's well, round. Well, with a remote, or do you have to use your phone to control it? That's no, what bothered me about the first No, I like that, because the phone uh, can has all these apps on the it, and I just cast it the yeah. Chrome. Yeah. I use I my phone on my Apple television. TV. I don't want to mess with my phone. My phone's in the charger when I'm when Oh, I'm no, that's, a, that's to me, that's one of the best things about uh, Chromecast, is I can just, uh, as apps get Chrome, the Chromecast, the little Chromecast button on it, that yeah, means all yeah. of the, I can just add more apps that do it. I love that. I, I, I use agree. Chromecast all I the can. time. I concur with you that. You know, the Roku has an optional app. So the Roku comes with a remote control, but there's also an app if you want to use it. I'm not saying not to have an app. I'm saying have a remote control for those of us. No, no, but it's not. A, but the so Chromecast is not a Chromecast app. Every app can have be Chromecast enabled. So your Netflix yeah. app, oh, I, it sends it to the Chromecast. You're, but I'm talking about the device that lets you stream video. There, there's a... There's a What's it called? I think it's called Chromecast, where you, you stick it in the HDMI port, you can watch movies. Yeah. 
you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, there's, like there's a Chromecast app only for configuring it at the very first. Then what you do is all of the apps that you have that support Chromecast will have a little button like YouTube. Right. You're watching YouTube on your phone. I want to cast that to the TV. The other night we were watching a movie on Google Play Music or Google Play uh, t uh, TV, and I just sent it to the TV and watched the movie there. I, I No, I think that works great because what it means is much like the Apple App Store, they finally got one. You can have apps on your device. Right. Which I'm not be saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying, but but you re, you're required to use it. You cannot watch a show on That's Chromecast. That's just one more remote to lose. Phone. I don't need any more remotes in my life. Oh, uh, it's one more phone to be dead and not be able to use when you want to watch TV. <laughs> phones. That's my problem. Oh, okay. I'm it watching TV. Phones charge. By the way, uh, Google and Spotify will launch Chromecast support later this month, which is nice for music. Chromecast audio. I think they're going to announce an audio device as well, codename Hendrix, made to Wi-Fi enable your speakers, so you can kind of turn your speakers into wireless. That's kind of cool. That's nice. Yeah. A lot of companies are trying to do that right now. That one company has the speakers and the lights and all that stuff that will play over AirPlay and stuff. Mm -hmm. FBI says that when you retweet something, you're endorsing it. That's scary. 22-year-old Queens resident Ali Salah was arrested following an FBI investigation into his attempts to join ISIS. According to the complaint against him, he began tweeting his plans in 2013. His retweets came up repeatedly in the complaint as cause for arrest. So when, for instance, on August 25th, 2014, a few days before the reservation was made, Twitter account A reposted or retweeted the following message, originally posted by another user. Uh, I'm ready to die for the caliphate. Prison is nothing. Is it an endorsement to retweet? They've been using... you're doing it. Not according to the media, the media Twitter bios of just about every journalist at like Reuters and the AP. I retweet yeah. people. It's so easy. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes I retweet I just... people. I retweet... I love that if you can now do a quote when you do a retweet, because I'll say, isn't this ridiculous? I, I re yeah. re retweet stuff I disagree with yeah, as a way of so, pointing out somebody, is, somebody's If idiocy. you retweet somebody, is that the same as you saying that? No, because sometimes I retweet stuff just because it's funny. Or like it, or like he said, it's so absurd. I just retweet. Everyone knows that I would never say that. But they'll look at it and they'll retweet it or they'll start because it's so absurd and funny. Like it doesn't mean that I, I support think, certain things. Like it's contextual. I think when you pass on an unsubstantiated internet rumor on your Facebook account, like, you know, that the post office is going to start charging five cents yeah, for Yeah, that you should go to jail <laughs> for, yeah. Then that you really are putting yeah. your name behind total bull crap. And, and I think you should be held responsible for that. But retweeting is different. I mean, you might, well, you know, I've, I've retweeted political comments that I don't necessarily agree with, but I thought they were interesting to, to share with my friends. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily an endorsement. No, I don't think that's a... Yeah, I think... I mean... Interesting. Yeah, yeah I don't like that. Amazon's new uh, Fire tablets are so cheap, $50. Yep. But they've decided there's a way to get them even cheaper. They're selling them in six packs. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. I laughed. <laughs> Why would you I'm, buy six, I'm, I'm you thinking about buying them. them? Uh, Father Robert sent an email out to our staff. They're buying three six packs. He said, Who Isn't wants a nuts? $50 tablet? <laughs> They're buying three six packs. Yeah, it ends up being like 46 bucks or something if everybody goes in on yeah. it. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah, Christmas done, dude. Christmas done. <laughs> it's so cheap. Why not just get, get, a, get, a, get a half dozen? I mean, like it, it really is a great bargain. I mean, I, I actually think the Amazon Fire, when people are in the market for a tablet and they want to save money, I, I, I highly recommend the Amazon Fire. I think they're, they're adequate. And unlike a phone, there's, I don't a, there's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> they're well, adequate. <laughs> I'm going to retweet that. You really want to spend what? How much are these things? Three hundred dollars. Uh, they start, start with? the the mini, uh, the new mini starts at five hundred, just like a regular I mean, iPad. Come on, you know, you know my mini doesn't do that much. Do you know what my mini iPad is? What? It, it is a mobile Netflix machine. Yeah, baby. That's it. That's what my mini you is. You can like, do that it, on, on a cheap tablet. But you could do it on a $50 out. one just so it's good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great Christmas stuff. Yeah. If they only use it for those two things, like give kid kids Netflix and Minecraft, if you could do those two things, it's the best thing in the world for a child. They don't need anything else. Right. 
Well, you know, for but don't children, you think, they have the don't you think that Apple version. like has already sort of like brainwashed kids into thinking that Apple's the good brand and that like anything else isn't, and that if they don't get an iPad, then they don't then then Christmas is ruined. Yeah, it's I, like I, yeah. when I got that fan. crappy Erecto set Uncle Leo, when I was I'm, eight. Uh, <laughs> Living in the real world, I know a lot of regular kids and that don't can't afford it, and they have those little Namcon tablets, and they're fine. My daughter sits right there and plays all her they're Apple happy. stuff, and they've got yeah. the, and they're happy they're because happy. they get to play Minecraft. They don't care yeah. what it's on. Yeah, no, because I, they have. I, I suppose there's probably an age cutoff though. Once they get yes, to a certain age, they, when they become brand conscious and they don't and they want the <laughs> Nike shoes, they don't want just regular boring tennis shoes. Twelve and under don't care. <laughs> when my kids that. turned old enough to want branded shoe clothing, I told them that if you're going to wear that, they have to pay you an endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tommy Hilfiger's name on your chest. Tommy has to give you some we, money. We must be old men because I have the same thing. I'm not going to wear uh, anything with it. Oh, never mind. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> hey, yeah, at least this is this is a defunct uh, enterprise. At least, but Leo, uh, they did pay you at one. That's point. right. They get they gave me money to wear this shirt. In fact, that's pretty that's much right. all I had to do to get the money, which is great. Uh, for like four years, you know, I was, a, I was, I was Ziff Davis show. Television, and there was nothing. There was no, and nothing. It was Gina, Gina Smith and I were just kind of wandering around pretending we were doing TV. They said, yeah, don't. <laughs> we, we used to fly yeah. down to MGM and because they, they, we were going to do a deal with MGM to create a channel. This is in 92 or 93. But my boss said, yeah, but we don't really want to make the deal. So just go down, have fun, enjoy it. <laughs> Talk to the guy as if we're going to make the deal. But whatever you do, don't say yes. So I wore the shirt. I got paid. I was happy. Didn't have to do anything. I'm sorry. The iPad Mini 4 starts at $399. Still a lot of money for a tablet. Yeah, yeah. it is. For, for, for if all you're going to do is gonna watch it. Netflix, it's bucks, <laughs> which is what I do with my tablet. I have to say, I have uh, I have an older Fire uh, tablet, the, a little bit bigger. It is great. You're right. I mean, it's not the greatest UI. They've they've mucked up Android pretty well. Yeah, but well. the new the new uh, tablets actually they've gone backwards on their oh, UI. Oh, really? Yeah, they're more they like Android. Lot, well, they look a lot more traditional. They're not per they're not perfect. They're not totally. Uh, they don't have stock, that carousel no. thing. No, it looks so a lot weird. different. Looks you a do lot one more thing like and you get a giant icon of that thing mm -hmm. on the carousel. It's like a reminder. Right. Um, I didn't really know that uh, Uporn had such a. Graphic icon. Anyway, uh, I think we're done. I think we're done now. We're cooked. I want to yeah. thank you. Aaron, you were great. You will come back, and please, and when these loudmouths aren't here, and we'll we'll hear more from you. <laughs> I, uh, anything you want to plug at uh, fortune.com? Uh, I think it's just fortune.com. That's it. Uh, Aaron wrote a great article on the IAB uh, upfronts. Now it's like a week old, but uh, you can reach read that at fortune.com. I think you actually uh, mentioned me. Uh, there was a mention. I believe you. A shout I, out. I believe a little shout out, and I appreciate that. And this is your your payback for that. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah, uh, that was that was not my intention. But uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Really, honestly, no tit for tat. Uh, yeah, I wait, wait. This is what I had to do on a Sunday night. Talk yeah, to waste time talking. To, to yeah, hour. yeah, like, that, yeah. This is your payback. Enjoy it. No, it's great to have you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. And do yeah, come back. Thanks for having me. Yes. I will. And please don't fix your microphone stand. We love it. <laughs> Just as And it I is. want to go bike riding with you the next time I'm in New York. Yeah. Now that I know you, oh, you bike. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll bring my fold-up bike. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Aaron's really looking forward to that, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, <Leo>. <laughs> 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 well, I just want to. I want to know how to get across Manhattan without getting killed. And I, I need yeah. Help on that. Oh, Larry yeah, I know. I know. I know the safe bike lanes, and then the sort of ah, you know the, one, the risky ones. Uh, right. Nice. Yeah, you'll put me on the risky ones. I know. Nice. <laughs> Larry Mag is at CBS Radio. You hear him there all the time. ConnectSafely.org is his uh, the website that helps kids safe uh, get them get on the internet safely. And uh, you know, I, was, I had a caller on the radio show. Uh, today, a grandpa who said, uh, my, my granddaughters are not allowed access to the internet. They're not allowed computers. They're seven, eight, and uh, nine years old, and they have never used a computer because their parents are so scared of it. And he said, I want to, can I, I, I realize they need to know this stuff. So he went out and got them Lego, Lego Mindstorms and stuff. He's trying to kind of get them literate. He says, I think they're going to need to know this stuff in the real world. Yeah. But uh, I understand why parents are scared. ConnectSafely.org if you have any qualms. Thanks, Leo. Yeah, great place to go. And Owen, I am an icon. 
J.J. To, Stone. To, to the crowd laughing at my artistic skills. This is freehand, bro. These lines are pretty straight. Wow, this, that's this pretty perfect. Circle. That's almost a, a perfect circle. circle. I'm you just meant, saying, it's a, you it's meant to do that cow look, at the, the cow look at the top, right? Oh, definitely. Got to have some flavor to it. You know what's me. <laughs> Um, uh, si side note, my IQMZ, I'm actually going to tell people what it is on Wednesday. So if you're on the email list, you're going to find out what it is. I give you a hint. I'm trying to be like Uncle Leo when I grow up on a smaller, more tan form, but just like Uncle Leo when I grow up. Inquiring Minds Media. Are you going to do a um, kind of a podcast network, a tan podcast network? You bet your brother you got it. I actually would love it if you did that. Yeah, I got, I see now I might as well tell people. I got like eight shows. I've been running around scouring the internet. That's awesome. Smaller people that want to shine in the world. So I come out and launch with my two main ship platforms. And then I bring some other people up with me. And if they take off in the atmosphere, then I just have them cut me a check and I'll send it home. If there's anything we can do to help, special. please let me know. I think that's a great, great. I, I'm really happy to hear you doing that. Good for you. Congratulations. Thanks. And people will Thank be able you. to go to IQMZ.com to find out more later in the week. Yep, home home channel, just like Twit, trying to be like you. No, Make that's good. Make it simple. But with a little flave. Little something. A little flavor Alex. flave. And a, and a clock with beats on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good to have you all here. Thank you for being here. We do this show every uh, Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC. If you uh, want to watch live, you could be in the chat room. We love having your participation. You could also be in studio. we got a great studio audience here. I thank you all for being here. Just email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a seat out for you. And uh, if you can't do either of those, of course, on-demand audio and video of always of all of our shows available at twit.tv. In this case, uh, uh, just go to the front page, twit.tv. I think this, I don't know where we, is it? <laughs> Every other show has its own three-letter acronym except for this one. <laughs> I don't know why. But just go to twit.tv. You'll be able to find it. In fact, I want to point out, by popular demand, a lot of people said, I go to the Twit website and I just want to see what's new um, I, you know, I want a list of all the new shows. So we've added a little feature and it may not be immediately apparent the way it's been since we launched the site is there's four columns and the three newest shows in each category, the three latest shows, the three new news shows, three new help and how to shows, three new review shows. But what we've done is made these links at the top live. So if you just want a list of all of the sh most recent episodes in a chronological order, that's, there it is. And uh, so that'll make it a lot easier for you to find something uh, that you want to watch or listen to. I understand uh, that we don't have full descriptions of the shows in the text there. People want that. I just don't think we have the room for it. If you are on a desktop, you'll see there's a pop-up that gives you the show description. But you can also, if you're on mobile, click uh, a link and get a full show description uh, on each and every uh, episode there. So a little, little bit of a change, just a little addition in, in response to your uh, request if you want to see a chronological list of the latest shows or all the latest news shows or help and how-to shows or review shows, those links are now live on the front page. Uh, and I realize it's not immediately obvious, so I thought I'd let you know you can click those links. And uh, it might take a little time the first time you do it to generate that list, um, but uh, I think that would make it a lot easier for you to find the shows you're looking for. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Thanks to our producer, great producer, Jason Howell, uh, and uh, to all of you for uh, being here. I'll see you next time. Another twit is, is in the can. Bye-bye. Doing the twit. Doing the twit.